I don't care that you're sleeping, Ninja. You're you're I'm late. still watching anime. This is my fault. <laughs> you will you, you were late. You will find you no one disagreeing anime. with you. Uh huh. What were you watching? Um, uh, I um, think we just transitioned to purple yelling cheese. <laughs> <laughs> cheese for everyone. Cheese for everyone. There we go. Okay. Yes, hello world. There you go. Sub, do the thing while I do the tweety thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Give me a little bit of warning. I was drinking. Right. I was warning. <clears throat> really? You don't drunk? need to do that. No, I'm drinking Dr. Pepper. Mm, sure. You don't need... Drunk I thought us. you were drinking water and my joke was a lot funnier. I mean, I've got a giant glass of water as well, but... Yeah. Why are you drinking water. without us? Yeah. Because I need hydration to stay alive and it's not alcoholic. Right. <laughs> we return to our adventures yeah, as they quickly venture back across the tropical island they have now spent three whole days on. They can see the ship that brought them here and still anchored at the sea, its masts carrying only its rigging, and the singular crewman impossible to make out on the deck. The stress of combat from the previous few days hangs over all of their heads as it's finally allowed to start taking its toll. The aches and bruises, however, are nothing compared to the several close calls a few of you had upon meeting your makers. Although not all is glum, even though two of the cultists managed to escape their leaders, you were able to push them off, forcing them to leave behind whatever they were looking for, along with a lot of their fallen comrades. You have also managed to make a new f uh, few new friends, one of which has even decided to travel with you for a while. Lucian, an arcane fighter. What will the party come across this session? What awaits them in Lake Cross? Let us see what this adventure holds for us today with the dummies and their dice. Mm -hmm. And I need to close my door because I forgot to do such. Ah, oh, shit. I really need to get wireless headphones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> to, okay. to Quickly your talk shit about No, to he, answer he, your question, he's a, I watched, he's a beautiful uh, person. Mm -hmm. He's a beautiful uh, person? Not me. Wrong to pick Clearly not me. <laughs> Get to me for this. Wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon is good. Oh, no, yeah. Watching Angels of Death. That's funny. Yeah. I anyway. V, RV for like 30, 30 days, so I'm taking advantage of that and binge watching anime. I feel like I was a freshman in high school. Hey, Decent, I know, you're, I, know you, I know you wouldn't be awake at this point, but thanks for the sub, man. I know, I know, I know when you sleep. <laughs> And he's actually my IRL. He's actually an IRL friend, so I do know. That's not creepy at all. That's not, that's not creepy at all, guys. All right? I'm not creepy. Decent. I'm not. I'm We're watching you. Watch. I think you've got a bit of explaining to do. No? Well, I've actually spoken to Decent, so I feel like I can be slightly creepy. Yeah. There's <laughs> some understanding of who I am. Yeah. Some. Yeah, you just have to remind him. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> I'm the idiot who always dies. He's the idiot who steals all your convertible cars and hoodies. Um. Well. Well. I mean, it's true. Hey, don't just my hoodie collection. <laughs> what about the convertible Getting cold, collection? I can wear more of them now. Everything but the hoodie collection. Yeah. I'm actually wearing a very fancy Overwatch one, which I believe Abby got me oh, for nice. Christmas last year. Ooh, it's that one. Yay. Yeah, it was either Christmas or my birthday. I honestly don't remember. It might have been like a, mm, a both thing. <laughs> in in, in between of, oh shit, we forgot to get something. <laughs> I never forget your birthday. Never. What a good friend. It's because I don't forget yours, I just forget to get you things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah, I remember yeah. when it is. You do, and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> anyway. It's not too when it's three months before yours. Also, bookshelf lady finally got her bookshelf. I got my bookshelf. Oh, <laughs> this is true. It's not firewood. It's not. It, yeah, I got it when I went to visit at the beginning of August. So oh, what's August. next on the list? I don't think I have anything else I need to throw at people. Oh, no way. You know, I forgot to give you that book, which I promised you. Yeah, I was about to say, I didn't get the book, though. Oh, I know where it is. What is it with you and bookcases? And books, in general? Because uh, I literally like books. I love reading. Reading's great. Yeah. Indeed yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Shall, shall, shall we get on our way? 
Yeah. Now nah, we're already 17 minutes late. Might as well make it longer. Yeah, <laughs> make, right. let's let's at least make it a round number. Can I can I say one more number. thing? Yes. Yep, you've just said it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. What are you gonna say, Ninja? Uh, I went to a concert last night in Coheed and Cambria. Is actually a really good band. Not gonna lie. Good. It was nice to go see them live. We shall recommend well, it to the to the people watching. I, I will recommend it to the people watching. It it's a it tells the story of people breaking out of space prison and blowing it the fuck up. Of course right, you like it. Go. It's all done for me. <laughs> okay, all all three of our friends who are watching. Hey, decent Atlas and someone else. <laughs> Wait. Hi. I actually don't know who is watching, but um. No. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. All right. I say we get moving. I suggest that Definitely. we walk. I suggest that we walk down that way and then walk along the beach. I feel like that'd be the safer option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avoid the creatures. Avoid the forests. <laughs> All right. So, when last we left off, you were. Oh, pardon me. Oh, that's bad when I drink too much Dr Pepper. Right. Um. Last we left off, you just got out of the temple ruins after just searching them. Uh. So. Uh, you just got out of the temple ruins. I assume you're going to go to the back of the ruins and then sort of head down and around the ruins and head off the island in that general direction rather than passing through the ruins? Yeah. Yeah, we're we're kind of low on health. We want to take the path that would um, lead, that would go in circles to confuse the people following us. Clearly. Boy gets confused along the way and then gets <laughs> lost. Serpentine! Serpentine! Yep. I don't want to be dragged underground again. Well, it is, uh, it's probably getting to afternoon now, uh, so you've got about, uh, 12 miles of distance which you can go, uh, from then, so it'll probably take you the rest of this day to get to uh, the beach and start walking along it. From there, it'll take you uh, half to three quarters of a day to reach the ship, but the ship can then start sailing. Are we able to... Is that at a fast pace or a normal pace? Uh, you, you can speed that up, but it's you're still going to have to spend at least one night on the beach, is essentially uh, it. Right. Uh, you can probably do it in, in a day and a third rather than day and two thirds. Uh, at a fast pace, uh, bearing in mind you are all relatively injured and tired sure. at this moment yep. in time, so uh, you don't want to push yourself too much on this day, but the uh, second day you'll definitely get there. Alright. Unless, uh, actually, if you're going to straight line... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need a you, short you'd... rest to regain health. I mean, yeah. you'd, you'd still have to camp at least once. Okay. Yeah, I say we go along the beach. That's away from the dangerous forests and things. Yep. What's such a friendly island? But I, like... uh, I do have a question I wanted to ask on the side. Certainly. Um, with the amount of times that throughout this journey, every party member's gotten hit, hurt, cut, etc., or have fallen in some place or another, what's the state uh -huh. of your clothes? Don't talk about it. <laughs> we just pretend to get it fixed. T taking a uh, taking I have a magic hit. pants that I can't take off, so if they're torn up, <laughs> that's true. Yes, that's the one. The, thing. the power of the universe keeps Boar's clothing intact. It's <laughs> Thank pretty God. weird. And it's, and it's kind of the trade-off that keeps it always clean. <laughs> Scholars around the world will queue up to try and investigate Boar's pants at one point in time. But, um... oh and as for bathroom reasons, anything that goes just goes into another dimension. I'm sorry, I have to do it. Yeah. Investigate! Mm -hmm. Yep. The, the, the inverted commas are so inverted, are they're straight sure again. Not... Are you sure it's not an athletic? <laughs> investigate uh, what? I'm afraid to ask. Anyway, uh, so anyway, right. Get, getting you. hit in combat isn't always doesn't always mean you know actually getting hit properly. Uh, your HP isn't just a representation of you know how many times you can get hit. Uh, it's also sort of like 
Uh, think of like the Matrix where Neo sort of dodges all the bullets. It's a ridiculously stupid move, and it takes a fair bit out of him, and in the end he ends up getting hit anyway. But that's beside the point. Uh, it's like it he has to really do something to try and get out of the way, and that probably expends a fair bit of his energy and such. So, like, uh, getting hit in combat isn't always, you know, taking straight damage and being stabbed and cut and slashed, but it's also, like, just getting out of the way of a blade and, you know, expending a fair bit of energy and stuff. So, um, their clothes, also, I would say, during long rests, they would have some time, and they do have a woman who is quite capable of patching clothing. Um, and they would probably patch a few bits up here and there as well. What if there was like blood stains that you couldn't get out? Uh, well, we don't have a we don't have a little gnome with thaumaturgy, but that is beside the point. Not thaumaturgy, prestidigitation. Uh, yeah, prestidigitation. Prestidigitation. Sounds like you have a stutter. I also have mending. I mean, dark dark coloured clothing, hard to see the blood stains. Also, stains of sweat and all that, somewhat dirty, like. <laughs> They're dirty clothes. This is, it isn't quite the same as modern day. Okay. Thank you. Alas. So, you guys, uh, do you travel up onto the hill where you camped the night before to take a short rest, or you get moving uh, straight away? Moving straight away. Yeah, walking yeah. straight away. Around the ruins and then down. All right. Uh, could I have uh, whoever's leading? So... Well, first of all, marching order, I guess. So, two at front, two in middle, two at back. Uh, Abigail's at the back. <laughs> Bless you. Oh. Breaking my eardrums. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know it was coming. It just showed up. <laughs> I will. I will walk in front then. All right, Boar's one at front. Uh, Santa will be. Abigail last. Um, uh, Santa will be next to uh, Sam Miguel on the back. I'll be in the middle, I, I guess? I don't know. Don't I? I could I'm be in the front. Decent. So I guess that leads where would... Um, so Agnes and Arsene would be in the centre. That leaves hard with, with Bo and Lucian at the front. Yeah. So it goes yep. Savangel, Serno, Arsene, Agnes, Bo, Lucian. So uh, if I can have Bo and Lucian to make perception checks. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh. Dice roller. Uh, perception check is well for it. Uh, for you, I believe it's minus one. Oh, oh, uh, good. Is yeah, there yeah. one one d twenty minus one? Oh, that's yes, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, will you both get thirty. Hey. Sweet. Well, uh, so as you make your pace uh, along. Bo and Lucian are able to guide you guys uh, with relative ease around a few of the uh, minor hazards which you might encounter along this uh, trip across the island. There's a couple of sort of sharp rocks just sort of hidden in the long grass and uh, hidden by other sorts of things which they're able to guide you around. You don't walk into and injure yourselves in any form. Uh, there's a few occasional dips um, and one or two cave entrances as well which appear strangely hidden. Uh, they seem like Significantly larger rabbit holes, but they're sort of quite well hidden just in the way they seem to have, like, the ground may have just been sort of collapsed down into these network of caves below. Uh, from your lookout, you don't see anything too alarming. You do see the occasional sort of wild animals, such as the, um... Oh, shit, now my brain's gonna have to remember what sort of wild creatures live in the tropics. Uh... My mind just went, huh. meerkat, because that's a thing that happens <laughs> in the tropics. Yes, you see a family of meerkats. <laughs> just, that would actually be pretty awesome. Unless, unless it's like the Monty Python thing, where they just take the place of the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you see a family of meerkats freely frolicking through the grass. Uh, actually, I guess there'd probably be, there'd probably be like a, maybe a small herd of zebra. Ooh, cool. Yeah, pretty much Madagascar. <laughs> so we have lemurs as well? Yeah, uh, not that you probably see them that much walking across the plains, but there's a small... Yes, they're, to they're totally four penguins at the top of this... at the top of that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't realise... South American uh, penguins, though... <laughs> what you don't realise is the shadow monster is actually a very, very complicated display of puppetry. 
<laughs> that honestly wouldn't surprise me. That is great. That would be pretty cool. Uh, no, so you probably do notice one or two meerkats, a uh, small herd of zebra, but uh, nothing that really gets too close or offers you anything uh, in the range of dangerous or worrying. You are able to get to the beach. Yeah, well, evil. Actually, I assume, assume you'd probably go at an angle. You'd probably get to about there. Hmm. Oh, so, yeah. <clears throat> you are able to get to the beach. You're actually relative. Uh, uh, you're. Yeah, you're, you're now a couple miles further down from where you uh, camped on the beach. Uh, so you're not near the rock outcropping the, uh, and where that boat was stashed. However, uh, you do find a relatively uh, secluded and uh, sort of uh, not quite alcove, but the grass where the sand dunes and the, um, and the sort of grassland meets. Uh, some of it is quite flat and, you know, just leads straight into it, whereas others there is a bit more of a cliff formed from uh, eroding of time and such. Uh, most of the beach is sandy, bits of it a bit more pebbly. Depends on the somewhat uh, interesting currents surrounding this island. However, uh, you are able to settle down for the night. All right. Oh, man. Let's hope uh, nothing attacked us. <laughs> I guess I'll take first watch. I'll take second. Uh, Someone take should third. be up Go for with it. Lucian. Yeah, you can't see, okay? Well, me too. Well, you want? Oh, wait, no, you can't see either. Um, I don't mind. So I'm gonna go, we'll go with um, Agnes. <laughs> So as far as we know, we think Lucian can't see in the dark, right? Yeah, I know. Human. Same thing. He is human. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> there was... He's human. Um, he told us he was human. Or he hasn't told us. He, has, he hasn't outright said he isn't human. How um, long is a watch? Never pray. Mm -hmm. A watch? Um, well, you need, you need about four watches. A long rest is about eight hours of sleep. So it's about two hours each. Can I use my wild shape to wild... Oh, do I have my wild shape? I don't know. I'm taking a short rest. You might not get it back. Are you taking a short rest? I've, uh, I've got one, so can I like... Yeah, you got one left. So can I take... I don't... A two hours. Hey! That's yeah, like you... the full amount of time, so I'll wild shape into a animal of night vision and take a watch on my own. Okay. Cool. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's Boron, Lucian, to then Agnes and Savangel to Cerno to Arsene, then? Yeah, that's good. I was about to ask where the lizard, but he flew off. Yeah, the lizard became a white raven and flew off. He abandoned us. Oh, so me, that's a first. Me and Lucian are on the same, uh, same watch. Didn't you say you wanted to be with Lucian on the same watch? I said I was gonna go first, but okay. I, I thought yeah, I was, was gonna go same watch as Lucian. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Alright, <laughs> Boar's going first. Who's going with Lucian? Arsene. Arsene, uh, yeah. Okay, so in it's not Boar and Lucian, it's Boar, then Agnes and Sam Gold and Cerno, then Arsene and Lucian. Okay. Right, well yeah. first Four. watch, Boar. Exception King check, please. Sixteen. All right, uh, so you you settle down as everyone starts to go to sleep, and you're aching a fair bit from the sort of uh, well the massive amounts of combat which you guys have been undertaking for the past couple of days, and the extensive running up and down stairs in a temple. Uh, so you take this time to sit down, relax a bit, and also do a bit of meditation, since you feel like you probably should do a bit more. Uh, during your watch, uh, you notice as the sun sets that indeed again there appears to be lights slowly appearing apart all over the mountainside which start moving up and down and along in uh, almost in set patterns but with enough randomness to make you believe that they are some form of sentient creatures just carrying out regular tasks. However, 
your watch comes to an end with awesome. nothing too alarming. All right, Agnes and Savango. Oh. Ooh. Uh, perception, right? Yeah. Please be good. Uh. All right. <laughs> Six and a 14. That's a 20, right? <laughs> That's not quite the way it works. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's it's 14. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys keep watch. You make note of the lights on the mountains again. It does appear to be a regular occurrence each day. And uh, getting into the later half of your watch, Savangel, you do notice as what appears to be the black cloud atop the mountain does seem to take off and disappear off to the more northeasterly direction. So going behind the mountain from what you can see. The rest of the watch is, though, however, relatively uneventful. There's the occasional uh, animal which comes close, and the sea slowly lapping at the shore. Kill it. Wait, no, wrong character. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sure it's the wrong character? Do you hear what? He does have a point. Agnes wouldn't just eat anything. Ms. Sure, if it's meat, it's meat. <laughs> they had to persuade her not to eat a rat the other day, so that was like... There, there'd be a bloodbath if she try if she was in this world, and tried oh, yeah. to eat night eyes. Our scene would go crazy. She wouldn't eat no, because we've got pets. She wouldn't eat night eyes unless night eyes died. So, our scene would still have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, our scene would definitely have a problem. Oh, I would and have then, many problems. And then Agnes Miss... would be against um, Misha as well, because be yeah. like, not my daughter. Not gonna finish that sentence. <laughs> in Mistress' eyes, they died. It waste not, one not sort of thing. And just, mm. I mean, it makes well, sense. Well, you can join them then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> also, that poor elderly gerbil. He's still alive. <laughs> He's not died yet. I know, but still, it's like, that hanging out with a stick lady and a snake might not be good for that poor gerbil's heart. <laughs> very true. The snake has got a very keen interest in said gerbil. <laughs> That's going to be the campaign ender. It's like the second that gerbil's eaten, mm -hmm. part just goes, just a mass battle that leads to total party KO. <sighs> My turn. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so I'm sorry. Your turn to take one. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to. I'm wild shaping into a giant wolf spider. Um, <laughs> which has my perception of I like. I mean, we're not seeing it. Lucian's not arachnophobic, as opposed to me. <laughs> oh, it should be fine. So I've got. <laughs> it probably wouldn't go well. For... I've got the blind no, side shit. of ten feet, and then a dark oh, yeah, vision of six feet. Oh yeah, because going to have to wake Lucian. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> what's your perception? Uh, yeah, plus five. Yeah, so I've got blind side of 10 feet, dark vision of 60 feet, so. <laughs> However, this <laughs> goes. Taking the wild shape. Uh, perception, like that. Uh, 23. Yeah, that's a good start to the night. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, for Cerno, keeping an eye on the dancing lights on the mountain, not really caring too much about them, knowing that. You camped on the mountain, and they didn't bother you at all. Your spider senses are slightly more keenly aware of that you are, again, being watched whilst you camp on this beach. <laughs> do, I, do I get a general sense of where from, or just know that I'm being watched? You, uh, again, it's a general sense that you're being watched. It seems to be there may be a few creatures watching you. And you do recall that the last time you camped on the beach, you were also watched during most of the night. 
I don't see anything in range of like just sort of around the perimeter of the camp. Uh, they, you sort of scuttle around and have a look. Uh, it appears to be the same human-faced dogs as before, but they are indeed keeping their distance. What do I recall about these creatures? I don't remember. They were, <laughs> they were, they were astral creatures from the astral plane, right? Something along those lines, um, where they travel across. Ethereal. The ethereal. That was it. Uh, our scene was able to inform you that some creatures have the ability to step into the ethereal plane, especially as a means of travel, and you are aware that these creatures are one of them. All right, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go back to my watch. Anything else happens, then I'll handle it. <laughs> From uh, the rest of your watch, the the sense of being watched maintains itself, and you get the feeling that they've probably been watching you for the vast, vast majority of the evening. However, only now in your spidery form are you able to discern that they are there. They seem to be, uh, by nature, very stealthy creatures, and their ability to jump in and out of the borderline plane allows them to be even more silent than before. However, the rest of your watch is pretty uneventful. Uh, you skitter around and keep an eye out. The sea splashes at you, and you skitter back. Nothing else of notice happens. I will wild or shape back into Cerno, and then go wake up uh, Lucian and Arsene. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lucian and Arsene. There you go, Ola. Do not have a spider touch you. Well, <laughs> I as can your handle... watch comes to an end, your form drops naturally anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm the I'm the arachnophobe, not him. So it's yeah, but you're playing him, so you know. I mean, it's it's like Skyrim, where it's the extent of where it gets to me, where it's like I can hear them. I'm playing in the game, and it's just kind of a claustrophobic feeling. And then the bastards decide to jump on you. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not pretty. So, like, this is fine. Mm -hmm. So as Lucian is lying asleep. He wakes up to see six hairy legs dangling in front of him. It's a paraplegic spider, because I just forgot how many legs they have. <laughs> anyway. And he thinks to himself, I need to shave. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me the hell alone. I'm already clean shaven. I, well, I was clean shaven a few days ago myself. Yes, it's weird how that works. <laughs> All right. Lucian yeah, and... for this hairy topic. <laughs> Lucian and our scene. Your watch. Same role as before? Uh, yes, uh, yes, indeed. Okay. I will inform them that the creatures are back. I'm just watching. Yeah. Certainly. And uh, with that information, our scene is just about able to locate uh, one or two of these creatures. Uh, they do sometimes move, and you kind of lose track, but you're aware that they're there. However, during the, uh, during the night, and into the morning as the sun begins to peak, you feel like, uh, well, as the sun begins to peek across the horizon, our scene, you lose all sort of sense and track of where any of these creatures watching you are. And as the sun begins to steadily rise, you do hear a distant roaring sound, and you hear from the north, uh, more actually more easterly direction, you see the rather large cloud-like being flying yet again back to the top of the mountain settling down and but staying visible it almost appears like it may be staring down at you guys and keeping somewhat of an eye <laughs> don't like it don't like it nope this is not the adventurers you were looking for yeah. <laughs> nope, we... you are looking for the B we come in peace <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's they, a joke they... that no one's gonna get until next week oh yes Oh, yes. We'll talk about that later tonight. Um, yes. Oh, today for me. It's all right. Nick. <laughs> yes, Agnes. <laughs> yes, Jam. Yes, we do. All right. You pack up and get ready, I guess. All right. Yep. You guys have a breakfast. Pack up. You have all successfully managed to achieve a long rest. Oh. Yay. All right. Man, I've missed those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
every single. Hey, that, that's another joke. Which, that's another joke only, which a handful of people are going to understand. My poor gnome, <laughs> dying. Because someone the blame Sophie. She was the one who wrote the D four. <laughs> oh, your character died. Shit. No, not yet. Oh, Nick too. is dying. So, so, for those who are interested, essentially, uh, Abby's other character has incurred the wrath of a um, creature who's not allowing her to sleep at night. Or at least Ooh, she's sleeping, yeah. but she's not resting. And so she is now out of spell slots. At, or, or has one left, I can't remember. One left. Has one left and uh, is rather low on the health front. So we'll see yep. where that goes. To which, uh, actually, <laughs> at this point in time in the world, whatever has happened, happened because you guys are still a couple of weeks ahead of them. Uh, you're two and a half weeks ahead of them now. Oh, well, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Quickly fly over that away and make sure my poor gnome is okay. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm not creating dragon breaks in this. <laughs> right. Actually, I think only Odd will get that. Anyway, so you pack up oh, in the morning. Yeah, I, re I heard it. Yeah, no, I think only you'll actually understand that one. <laughs> Mostly. For those unaware, because of the um, inconsistencies that happen because the Elder Scrolls games are so open to choice, when big things happen, aka like end game events, in the world lore there are such things as uh, called dragon breaks, which essentially mean multiple universes happened and it's unclear exactly which one did. I take that back, I didn't know that. It's essentially their get out of jail free card and it's called a dragon break because the Akatosh <laughs> is the dragon god time. Okay, makes sense. Oh. Yes, I'm a law nerd. Right. Oh, yeah, we knew that by heart. Um, we're so proud of you, all the same. No. Someone's got to get there. So you guys eat, pack up, shake all the sand out of your clothing and boots, and head start to head along the beach. Mm -hmm. The day is... Uh, Relatively warm, although as you progress along the beach, you see the, the sky is beginning to cloud over, and where it's already relatively humid here, the air seems to get thicker, and uh, it's not quite raining, but um, there's a lot of moisture in the air. Mm. Uh, you... God, it's so hot. Uh, oh. <laughs> Have I go judge her? Uh, if there's sand, she's gonna dive into it and give herself a dust bath. There is plenty of sand, and Savangel being Savangel and Gore <laughs> actually being the only two which aren't exactly sweating. They are just panting a fair bit, however. And Savangel seems to joyously dive into the sand a couple of dunes occasionally and just sort of flinging sand around. And but uh, most of you who've been trying to avoid getting sand in your clothes, she doesn't seem to particularly care. However, uh, you stop for lunch, have um, have a small meal. You are now roughly sort of where you were when you uh, probably one of the first times when you talked to Lucian. However, after which you guys continue on and find the small, relatively small rowboat to which you took away from the ship. And your one man skeleton crew. Lucian's jaw drops for a minute. Ah, uh, you haven't seen the skeleton crew yet. No, no, it's just like, was this was the ship that he got dropped in like a standard ferry ship or something like that? Like, he'd... Uh, it's a fair dist uh, it's a fair distance to sort of travel across this cove. Um, it probably would have been uh. It probably would have been uh, maybe not quite the same size. Uh, Argenfell's ship is actually pretty big, but uh, it would be. A... It wouldn't be, like, dwarfed by it. Okay. I like that term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, you guys are able to ooh, just about squeeze into the one rowboat you took across. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to take a wee bit of him. A persuasion to get Agnes into said boat. Mm -hmm. 
Don't look at it. <laughs> she wants <laughs> Fuck water, I'm getting off this land. <laughs> it, it would be so funny if this was en ended up being what it, she needed, ended up being the case of. Uh, the thing that would call, end up uh, getting rid of most of her fear for of um, water. Just like an island that maybe <laughs> possibilities are out there. <laughs> but then again, we are all in kind of a screw it mood. Okay, that's a bad mm -hmm. sentence to use. I'm mm -hmm, sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Get off this island move. You guys <laughs> get into you get into the small rowboat. Agnes seeing slightly more keen than you're expecting. And you guys start heading your way over to the ship. I start singing row 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 your boat and helping everyone sings along in harmony. <laughs> Seven Gale is attempting to play a rock opera on her Dilsim and uh, Delta Miller. <laughs> well, we all sing row, 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 row your yeah. boat. That is the stream. Barely, 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 barely. Life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat. Gently down the stream. <laughs> right. I mean, barely, apart from the fact you're not, barely, on, you're not on a stream, Life but you know. I mean, row, you're in a stream, row, row, as in, like, boat. technologically, but you know. The the boat. <laughs> Barely, 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 barely. Life is but a dream. I'm gonna wait until he tells me to fucking stop and we made it to the Lightning ship. cracks. Anyway, oh, you guys make it to yeah. the ship. I mean, I already said you made it to the ship. You know. Oh, I didn't hear that part, sorry. <laughs> yes, Seven Girl asks for Dulcimer back so she can practice her rock opera while balancing on top of everyone else. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to imagine this working in, in a piece of art or something. Just trying to imagine this, and I don't know. Uh, it would be amazing. Uh, Seven girl in with like flames in the background. Seven girl gives the, the, the biggest out. kitty eye she can give. No flames, no flames. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Although now you mention it, Jam. <laughs> So, Bang, you guys pipe. eventually reach the side of the ship, which is still anchored. And uh, is still anchored and floating in the water. As you approach the side, two ropes sort of drop, uh, two ropes are dropped down along with a netting to help allow you guys climb up. As uh, you climb up onto the ship itself, Lucian, you notice that this ship appears to be pretty much empty. There is only one figure who is currently stood slightly away off from the actual uh, from the uh, wheel and the helm of the ship. And as you as the final people finally pull themselves onto the deck of this ship, you notice that behind you the rowboat is actually lifting itself and the rope seem to have twisted down and into the and attach themselves to the boat, and the boat is now just being lifted from the water, as if as if being the ropes were being pulled by men. But there is no one you can see doing it. Lucian's thinking this is actually pretty kind of cool. Sweet. <laughs> I take it. Terrifying at all. On to Lake Cross. Considering all the stuff I... we encountered these past few days, I, the fact that none of this is trying to. Never mind. The yep. Lake Cross. Well, yeah, that is weird. <laughs> I tell the captain, aye, aye. On to Lake Cross it is. Yeah. That, Argenfell grabs hold of the wheel. And as he does so, you see him sort of flex slightly and the rigging sort of uh, <laughs> moves, the sails begin to unfurl as ropes start tying themselves down, loosening to allow such to happen. The, you hear the sound of the anchor being dragged back up before the ship is once again on its way towards Lake Cross. Alrighty, it shall take you approximately... Oh god, uh... <laughs> Bring two, and half, two and a half days to get there. So is there anything you guys particularly 
want to do in the time whilst you are traveling aboard the boat. Uh, it is saying sailing near constantly. Argenfell doesn't appear to sleep, or if he does, he doesn't seem to... Um, um one thing. Does, mm. out of curiosity, does Lucian have anything to write? Like paper or anything like that? Mm, I don't let's know see it... your equipment. Uh... Yeah, um... I don't know. Answer? No. You do Butter. have have a set of playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play poker. Might do that during one of the days they're sailing. I mean, got some time to relax. Um, but Angle's going. Do you sit play go fish? Yeah, go ahead first. You started first. I interrupted. That's no, okay. Um, actually, I had a question out of character. Wanted to ask you, Purple. Hmm? You picked up a few of those uh, cultist masks, right? Yep, twelve of them. I would, would you be oh, okay with kit. trading one of those masks for the dagger I picked up? Sabanga will happily trade a mask because she's got plenty. <laughs> Sweet. Boar has put on one of the capes. So oh. yeah, he'll ask Zerno um, if she... Actually, wait. I would Before that, um, I think he would ask if anyone happened... Because otherwise it'd be kind of metagaming because you wouldn't know that um, Savangal picked up the masks. Well, I think it would be better if he asked if anybody. Well, Savangal isn't just Savangal isn't just carrying around a couple of masks. You would you probably would have seen her giving them to Arsene, to, uh, not Arsene, Agnes to shove into the bag of holding. Okay, so um, either way, I'll uh, ask it, ask her if she'd be interested to try. That's of right. course I'd be interested in trading. And then she asked Agnes, like, can I have a mask, please? Thank you. Much appreciated. And Seven Girl takes the mask for Agnes and trades it with um, Lucian for the, the dagger. <laughs> Certainly. I will have to remember which... Uh, actually, no, I do remember which dagger it is, but... Yeah, yeah, it never made it to my inventory, so... <laughs> I just... know it never made it to your inventory, because no one bothered to check what this dagger is and what it does. I just picked it up. It's like... I know you did. Uh, so I uh, would like uh... to give the Illusionist's cloak uh, they picked up to um, uh, Savangal or Arsene. Um, I was going to give you your bow back. Um, oh, I forget. He's going to go. Who? I. It's not really going to work for me. You two can take it. And he, like, holds it out to one of you to take. Waiting. Okay. <laughs> I don't need a fancy quote. You're going to have it. will explain what it does to our scene because they don't know. Super fancy cloak. Um, I mean, I don't really use anything like this. I don't do any theatric stuff. I need any intimidation stuff. Then he hands it to Savangal. Savangal puts it on and starts running around the thing like a Superman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have uh, two idiots charging around the boat, trying uh, charging around the boat with the capes on. It'll, the, it'll, get um, a, it'll get a smile from the somewhat confused and broody Cerno as he turns back on his heel and returns. Do we have our own quarters on the ship, sort of thing? Yes, you do. You do have your own quarters. And uh, the more keen-eyed of you notice that um, as Boar and Savin Girl charge around the ship, the ship does seem to literally move ropes and barrels out of their way if they're about to crash into them and just clears a path for them. Oh... So cool. I was trying to this fly. Really cool. Yeah, I know you're trying to fly, but as far as you get there is jumping up and down, flapping your arms and charging the ship. So I was going to return <laughs> to his uh, room, and you said I got some herbs and stuff, right? Uh, yes, yes, you I, did. I don't think I've written them down here, which is <laughs> stupid on my part. I thought uh, I had. Let me go. Let me go find the freaking. Uh, it was session, uh, session thirty-two, comment. It was session thirty-two. I think. What session is this one now? Sorry, comment. 30... We're in 38. 
Oh it wow! Was, I think it was a uh, just some herbs to make a uh, greater healing potion or superior. Uh, uh, it was just greater, I believe. Uh, <laughs> Documents. There we uh, go. I got the ruins, the ruins, the ruins. So was session thirty-three. Thirty-one, I think it's in. What, was it thirty-one? Oh God. Yeah, because I wrote the no find some herbs. That was all I wrote. So I find some space. Uh, uh, no, that's not it. That's not what. That's not uh, ah, yes, here we go. Uh, uh, yeah, it was Ember Sage, Flux Clover, King's Blood, and Wolfsbane, notably several herbs used in healing potions and other herbal treatments. Uh, it is the cost. Oh no, I believe it was to make two two regular healing potions. I believe it was enough. Oh, was it just two regular mm -hmm. healing potions? Have I used them then? Uh, no, you haven't. You haven't used these herbs since you picked them up. Okay, I'm gonna spend however <laughs> Wait, amount of time did... I can. Oh, shit, I can't remember if it was two healing potions or one greater. Fuck it, we'll go with greater for the sake of it. All right, so I could. Uh, I should... You can uh, spend some time to make a greater healing potion. However, the process takes uh, slightly longer than a regular healing potion. I believe it takes uh, four days. Oh, I don't have the time on the ship then. Unfortunately, not. Not at the moment. Okay, I don't have anything else to do. I don't because I don't have any other herbs. Uh, you, you could probably uh, you could use the herbs to make several uh, regular healing potions if you wanted to. Uh, Would I have the amount of time to do that in the two days I have? Uh, yeah, it, it takes you a day to make one regular healing potion. It can make it can make four regular healing potions or one greater. So your choice. I'll make the regular healing potions. Okay, so uh, if we from Sono, if we have uh, you have proficiency, so roll a d20 and add five. This is a wisdom uh, wisdom and proficiency check. Five. Roll that twice. All right. Uh, okay, and roll it again. Okay. <laughs> yes, you just pass in making uh, the first one is uh, the first one is uh, very good and uh, you're quite pleased with yourself. You're actually able to do it in uh, about an hour or so less than you had expected, so you get a little bit more free time. Uh, the following day takes you a fair bit longer. The seas are a bit rougher as a storm starts to settle in. Uh, although the although it's weird standing on the standing on the deck. You don't really feel that affected by the storm, the wind buffering you or the rain. You still get wet, but you just don't feel that affected. Below deck, however, the ship is a bit more choppy and churny, and it makes crafting of these potions a bit more difficult, but you are able to successfully craft two regular healing potions. Zerno so, will not have come out during this time. He will have just been focused on making these potions. All right. So he at least returned the short bow to you. If you can get in, God, we're gonna... he doesn't use a boy shot, is right? going to meditate yeah, you might. for the rest of the day because he's given up on flying like the cultists. <laughs> <laughs> they are just regular non magic cloaks, I'm afraid. God damn it, <laughs> it's an ability of the people rather than the clothes to which they were wearing. Would have casted identify on the dagger um, while running around. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> when she's tired. Uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, now I have to find. Oh, God's sake! I have. So she's a master I have of too multitasking. many tabs open. Uh, I was just about to say that she's a master of multitasking, but I'm. Eh. There's a lot of multitasking going on. It seems. Uh, it is a dagger of defense. Whilst wielding this weapon, if you take the dodge or disengage action on your round, your movement speed is increased by five feet for set round. Oh, it is perfect for you. <laughs> and it is not a tuning. And then Seven Gull during the two day trip would send message to uh, use mess uh, sending to see how her sister and her troop is doing. All right. Uh, let me just check the sending spell. Oh, shit, that's on Sano's page. Uh, let's have a go. 
send it. Uh... All right, roll a d hundred for me, please. Purple. Oh, what? Roll one d hundred. All right, all good. Okay. So, uh, your message to Kimi is uh, received, and she essentially passes on that she's um, she's doing all right, although anxious for you guys to get there. Uh, the sending to your troop uh, it's it's a little more difficult than you uh, than you anticipated, although uh, the message does get through to them, and uh, they're having a jolly good time. They are currently uh, they are currently still at the. Uh, uh, when you last spoke to them, they were heading off to a fancy, uh, a fancy person's place uh, to play a few bits for a party. Um, it took them a little while to travel there. The party has subsided, but they've been allowed to stay an additional day or so, to which they're making the most of in a fancy house with servants that do what they're told and free food. Jeez. <laughs> that, that, that sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, anything else anyone else is doing? Um, I just meditate. That's basically about it. Uh, um, I say we'll not give room. Cerno back his um, uh, the, the not his bow. We'll not give back the bow. He's too busy focusing mm -hmm. on potion making. No, I'll leave it outside his door then. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've got the illusionist cloak and your uh equipment, Samago. Uh, I haven't refreshed my page yet. No, I'll, I'll, for God's sake. I shall make a note of this and change them <laughs> round where appropriate. So we have. Oh, I'll gal. just remove it from my inventory. Do I give uh, it? Seven Gal needs illusionist cloak. Uh, and dagger. Oh, and dagger of defense. What's the dagger of defense do? I'm sorry, I had to uh, quickly go to. Do something so uh, when you uh, essentially whilst you're wielding it so you have to be using it as in you can't like just have it on your side yeah. or something it has to be drawn and essentially in your hand so uh you can't just sort of like chuck it to one to the other to the other yeah <laughs> it doesn't work quite that well uh but it is a non-attuning magic items so as long as you're sort of wielding it and uh using it as such it grants you its bonus to which is if you take the dash or disengage action you um gain an additional five feet for that round. Uh, sorry, dodge or disengage. Dodge or disengage. Okay, cool. That's good. Right, so, uh, Sano needs the uh, marks. I'll, I'll add Short it. Bow. I can add it. No okay, problem. if you want to add it. Marksman I think it's called shot. Marksman Shot. Yeah. All right. Okay, so Boar is meditating, uh, Lucian, uh, Agnes is hiding on the, well, is essentially hiding where it's least choppy. Uh, um, Lucian have a room, uh, a room of his own on the ship? Uh, yes, he is designated a room when brought aboard. Okay, he's pretty much been spending a uh, majority of the time there, um, just taking time to make, maintaining, uh, equipment like chainmail and stuff. And Certainly, oiling the sword, grind, uh, wet stoning it, all that jazz. In no ways. <laughs> um, but as he's going through it, um, sorting through it, he's just processing a lot of what's happened over the past few days um, from one thing to another, including some of his own actions and being very, very, very thankful that he was, he's still able to keep going. So that's nice. So, little things. It's the little things in life. Uh, mm -hmm. Arsene, are you doing anything? I'm keeping Night Eyes entertained so he doesn't mess with anyone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Is there a feeling of ham that you sense from uh, night eyes? <laughs> Always. It never stops. That is almost a permanent sense. <sighs> uh, the ghost is apparently trying to sunbathe until it starts raining, where he then just sort of hangs out with Agnes grumbling about the rain. Uh, <laughs> as you depart the island, uh, the temperature rapidly <gasps> drops back down to the temperate sort of uh, the temperate sort of temperatures which you're used to, uh, or expect up this side of the Sword Coast. And uh, as you leave, nearing the evening of the um, nearing the evening of that first half a day traveling, the smoke creature does actually fly off of its mountain mm. and seems to do a flyover of the ship before turning, and circling once, twice. Well, then heading back towards its island. <laughs> I just have this image of the dragon just flying around, and you know where you have the two fingers up by your eyes, then pointing towards. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dragon just like. I'm watching you look up you. and you see that it seems to be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> eyes narrowed. Determined. He killed its pet. That's why it's sad. We haven't seen our green friend, have we? Uh, you have not seen your green friend since... Friend uh, with quotation marks. Yeah. Since travelling uh, to grab Basilisk. Okay. Oh shit, I've realised on this map I'm also missing... Uh... Don't mind me, I I'm smart. S-M-R-T. So I assume we make it to Lake Cross without problems? Please. There we go, there's a forest. Uh. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, yes, you do, traveling the, uh, trying two and a half days and the activities to what you do. Uh, actually, uh, Boar, for your meditation, um, uh, the first day, Cord seems somewhat distant. Uh, however, upon the sort of second day and meditating, you get a sense of uh, you get a sense of that there still needs to be a few things to which uh, you need to do. Um, not so much prove yourself, but uh, more sort of get back onto the path to which uh, is wished of you. Yeah. However, uh, you don't sense displeasure, just more sort of a feeling of being guided. Okay. I'm kind of confused what that path is, but... <laughs> uh. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no lollygagging. <laughs> bark, bark. You guys do, however. <laughs> What, do you mean Dayron, who's just happily sunbathing and then bitching about the weather? So you guys do finally on the uh, after two days and uh, yeah after after two days uh, um, and nights of travel, it is sort of in the morning when you are roused from slumber by a single bell sort of tolling, and uh, as you make your way onto the deck, you do see the lovely sprawling countryside. Of this, of well, actually, this isn't the Sword Coast. You have left the Sword Coast. You see the sprawling countryside and a small town uh, residing upon uh, the edge of 
it's well the edge of said countryside uh it there is a somewhat um there's wooden piers built out uh the sort of land does twist and form somewhat of a natural cove to which these piers are built out into and the main force of the wave seem to hit against cliffs uh somewhat further to the east of the actual east to the of the actual city uh the town seems to be somewhat small, uh, wooden and stone-based construction, and relatively, uh, relatively normal, somewhat uh, akin to Neverwinter, from what you guys saw uh, saw of it. The uh, boat, ma- uh, sorry, the ship makes its way into the harbor, where it sort of docks and uh, a uh, gangplank, I think, a uh, plank. Planks are sort of put down, and you are allowed to disembark onto the docks. The captain, Argenfell, sort of gives a low bow so as you disembark. Nods and stuff. Very awkwardly. Nods. <laughs> Come find me. I travel the waterways. With that, he actually sets off towards what appears to be the harbour master, who is um, making note of the uh, ship having docked, and he seems to have a somewhat conversation. You notice the harbour master seemed very uncomfortable talking to him, but um, <laughs> there's a job which needs to be done, so he does it. You guys are now in the town of Lake Bros. What do you do? Uh, Sam Miguel is practicing playing um, a rock ballad <laughs> with a stringed <laughs> instrument without a nap. <laughs> uh, Cerno suggests that we head straight to um, Johan's shop here. Get our pay. That was a thing. That's yeah, a that's... really good idea. Let's go find Johan. Maybe see if he feels down. I said, Johan. We gotta pick him off of the ground. <laughs> Alright, well. Uh, I, uh, whoever is trying to find the shop. Uh, I suggest that we ask lead, around. <laughs> I suggest that we just Whoever's ask trying around. to lead to find the shop, uh, please roll an investigation check, and I'm actually going to be right back. I may have to skip uh, Well, it could be well. Agnes, or it can be Sano, uh, or whoever's trying to find the shop. Uh, Asking around is involved in the investigation, so whoever's trying to find the shop, I guess it can be two of you, can roll an investigation, and I am going to disappear, and I've already taken my head. I'll help, because otherwise Sano won't talk to anyone. Yep. <laughs> so, we both roll, like, hey. separate investigations. Okay. Mm-hmm. In- investigation. <laughs> yep, so I'm still broody. Uh-huh. He's not talking to anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, you tried. Dude, it's been a few days. Not a lot of it. Still thinking stuff through. Feelings, mm-hmm. man. They're hard for man. normal people. Feelings suck. <laughs> I mean, D&D Beyond, huh, guys? Isn't it great? <laughs> We use it so much, and we're not sponsored. Please sponsor us, we want money. Um, no, no. <laughs> we should be sponsored by, uh, the phone application battle I like the overlay. Oh, God. Fucking the overlay is games. pretty cool. Yeah, now I don't so have to go on to D&D Beyond to be nosy about my party members. I mean, what? Oh, yeah, that D&D Beyond app thing. It, 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 it sure is dandy! Does oh, show all of us. Are yeah. you failing at plus? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could have taken the time to talk about next week, but nah. <laughs> Sub yeah. knows the most about that than anyone. So, <laughs> okay. all right. Well, with a three, Cerno, you are just overwhelmed by being in a city yet again. Yep. It's a somewhat <laughs> weird feeling, and still relatively new for you. Uh, you are. Somewhat uncomfortable with it all. Uh, however, luckily for you, 
Agnes is there to somewhat take charge. Uh, asking around and quickly finding out where the Forgotten Problems is located. Uh, it is yet again a small, relatively small in size, sort of rickety shop with a sign hanging out upon it over it with a sort of silhouetted human head and then sort of a, a bubble coming out of it which says Forgotten Problems plastered on its sign. Uh, as you uh, the windows are sort of dusty and uh, there's a few ads sort of hanging in them and promised services and such and as you push open the door there is a bling, 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 bling. and although currently no one in the store you do hear a bit of movement from out back while we wait for them to come in so I know it's going to glance around any items that look interesting <laughs> Roll a perception check. I'm uh, good at these guys, don't worry. Uh, Everything is going... Hey! Uh, Ooh, natural nice. 20! Yay! Oh, nice. uh, Had to use it now. <laughs> <laughs> of, of course. When else would you use it? Yeah. Uh, shit, now I have to find a different... Bloody... Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Comment, uh, causing trouble for DM since whenever he started playing. Uh, uh we started playing January. Almost, almost a year. Nice. Playing for a year. Almost a year. Oh, Here we go. We've Shit, almost happened. been together for a year, guys. We've only travelled oh. this small area. Yep. So actually bad. the 18th of November, yeah. Nice. Oh. No. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Sano, glancing around, there's one or two interesting items. Uh, there appears to be a pair of um, somewhat worn leather boots just sat upon the um, uh, sat upon a counter. Uh, there is a couple of arrows just lying and sort of uh, sort of on like dusty cushions uh, with little uh, notes sort of scribbled and um, attached by a little bit of string hanging off them. Essentially explaining a little bit what they, uh, a little bit of uh, what they do. However, there doesn't magic and in sort of enchanting isn't really one of the um, the uh, uh, expertise areas for Johan and his shops. It is a lot more uh, divination based. Yeah. Also, I was just, I was just curious, really. <laughs> and also, actually, uh, potion making. There are a couple of potions dotted around as well. Can I sort of tell what they are? Do they have, like, little night press name tags on them, or...? Yes, yes, luckily for you, they do have a few little name tags. <laughs> uh, there appears to be a... Uh, uh, there appears to be something uh, which is referred to as Oil of Slipperiness. Yeah. And a Potion of Vitality. Okay, D does the boots have a price or name tag on them? Uh, they do indeed have a price tag of 63 gold pieces. That's... However, what they do, you're unaware. Would they fit me? Uh, the boots in their current state would seem to be rather large for you. Mm. I thought Sona didn't like wearing shoes. <laughs> yeah, see, I was about to say the same damn thing. I thought he looks, he was he looks at his bare feet, looks up at the boots... <laughs> Did you say it was a busy? Hmm? Did I say what? Sorry, Abby. Oh, did you say it was a busy city town? Uh, there's there's, there's people going about doing their things. It's a medium-sized town. People working on the docks. People sort of wandering around the uh, town. Uh, there seems to be a fair a fair bit of trade happening. Scale one to ten, how busy? <laughs> uh, if never winter was eight, this would probably be a four or a five. Okay. Scale of uh, one to our scenes hiding with group. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, you our know. scene feels uncomfortable but is not overwhelmed. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you have to roll for this shit, you know. When it gets too much. 
Uh, it doesn't take Sona very long to glance over of these items, considering that, that 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, uh, it, probably about a minute or so before the sort of shuffling out back stops and a humanoid steps out. Um, is it a goblin it is... again? Hmm? Is it a goblin again? No, it is not a goblin again. I don't Thank fear. you very much. He doesn't just employ goblins. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a relatively tall humanoid. Uh, not quite tall, as tall as Boar. However, uh, tall, relatively lean and well-muscled, uh, and also sort of dark grey hair, which is long and sort of very poofy and tied back. And as you get a closer look, what you first bought as a beard, you see now seems to be more a very fine amount of fur, sort of going mostly over most of his face, sort of down his neck. And you also notice along his uh, the exposed parts of his arms, uh, and you do notice that his hands uh, seem a little bit more, uh, a little bit more poor rather than hands, but thumbs does have, and sort of walks out. Uh, yes, uh, hello. How can I help? Um, Hi. Sono is going to whoop, stand behind Agnes like a scared child. Uh, he sniffing. does start sniffing in the direction of stabbing the owl. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to turn in a job we took go to on in Maple Diet. Oh, a job? Oh, wonderful. Uh, right, uh, what was this job? And with that, he sort of reaches under the desk and pulls out a large bound book, kind of poof, flips it open. Uh, go. Right, uh, which job was it? Uh, we currently have three out. There's one finding the... One was clearing the island. Another was clearing that one. Naga Heart. Mm -hmm. It was the clearing the island. Clearing the island. Ah. Damn it, you should have let him so... speak through them all. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to fucking go on other quests. Yeah, but I'm, inter I'm interested. I'm interested to see what the other plot lines were. Carry on. <laughs> go back. <laughs> so, uh, clearing out the island. Did the uh, did the underdark creatures cause you much trouble? <laughs> so underdark. Your, your company knew about the creatures that were there. Uh, yes. We were sending adventurers to clear them out because it sort of slams the tome closed. Uh, because, well, uh, as powerful as the master can be, he didn't want to be corrupted by the uh, whilst he was doing his work. Uh, the sort of grey skinned humanoids can be quite persistent, and rust monsters are just the worst. So, we didn't get told which creatures we were to clear out, we were just told to clear the ruins. Grey skinned creatures. Didn't see many of them that weren't already dead. Cleared the oh, living well. things out, though. Well, that seems to be uh, much easier on you. Mm, I wouldn't say so. These living things were humanoid. Well, uh, your contract wasn't to clear them out, but hey, if you've done so, we're not mm. going to. You may want to send someone in there quickly before they come back. Oh? They were rather determined to get their hands on some things. Hmm. Well, we will certainly make a note of that. However, uh, the things may not be... Eh, depends what things are after. Anyway, I believe you were... Uh, we requested that you make note of what items you are taking from there. Uh, we would allow you to have them. Just uh, want to know what items that you were able to get. A load of masks and capes. Including okay. the Titan. Were those found from the ruins? No, those they who were found. Well, we're clearly not interested in those. The things found in the ruins, miss. This cape? You're not cape, okay. And he sort of uh, starts sniffing again and then sort of shakes his head slightly. Uh, do we? Uh, do you have any understanding of what this cape does or anything? Or is it just a interesting looking cape which you found in the ruins? Savangel activates the ability... <laughs> Ugh. Well, uh, that's certainly interesting. <clears throat> he seems slightly taken aback, but starts scratching things down onto 
onto what appears to be the same contract you all signed. The paper, however, seems to have extended at the bottom, and he's just scratching things down onto it. All right, uh, anything else found within the ruins which you have taken? What about the dagger? I don't a dagger? know if it was... This dagger? That it belonged to the ruins, or it belonged to the people that were there. Uh, may I? And he sort of reaches out a poured hand. For you to place Seven the dagger in there. Davangel hands him the dagger. Thank you. And so <laughs> looks it over. Uh, it appears to be uh, more modern and then uh, the enchantment to which we were looking for. Uh, although you may have found it in the ruins, I don't think it was quite what we were looking for. And he hands it back to you. The cloak, however, seems to be a bit more. Obviously. I don't know what else was, that was pretty much in it. there. There wasn't really anything to take. It was... Well, there was something in there that we couldn't take. It was... Um, no. And he's poking out from around, like, the back of Agnes's leg and skirt. Um, it was in a... It was in, like, a display case. And we... It was very powerful. We couldn't get it open, and it was like a bone of an old dragon. Or something. Ooh. Now, that is interesting. You didn't that take it, though. That's the thing no. the cult was after. Yeah, the dudes that we actually fought. That's cult. what they were after. You're interested in them now? Well, you didn't say exactly who fought. The said you fought things for I knew. All I knew, you could have been fighting grave robbers. Fighting what? I interested Grave in robbers. Mm. Thank yes, you. and you were very vague. It's a bit like if I said I served some humanoids today. To be fair, that mm. in this world and time, you could serve anything. I could, but it would be incredibly unuseful for you if you were trying to find me. Sure. Now, these cultists, you said they were interested in this uh, shard of bone? Mm -hmm. They seem to be. They're also the ones mad. responsible for masks, capes, and everything else we picked up. Okay. Well, maybe we do need to hurry there, side. And you need to make sure that the people you send there are well prepared. I don't see six names on this contract. Did you pick someone else up? Yeah, he oh. was in the world. I, well, yeah, I, I just... We also found to... him near the ruins. Should he be on the list? No, in, <laughs> in, in the ruins. Oh. I, magic items in the ruins, smarty pants. It was right. magic, but he wasn't in the ruins. Then you don't need to oh, tell us about him, do you? You asked. Um, my mistake. Right. Would the... Okay, well, unfortunately... Would, would yes. the glow-in-the-dark sword also count? Did you find it in the ruins? No. No. And no, it doesn't no. count. Right. Now, we cannot change the agreed upon price that it was agreed upon and it has been uh, it's been bound. So we cannot change the price which we agreed upon. However, uh, you're free to divvy it up as how you see fit between the. So how much do we get? Uh, it's like yeah. a thousand gold to share. I am just trying to remember. Because I, <laughs> I have too many pages of shit to look through. And I think you wrote it down like what, five weeks ago? <laughs> five weeks? God no, we're talking we're talking almost eight Six. weeks ago. See, ooh. Oh god. Wow. <laughs> that was <fun>. Wow. <laughs> this uh, is too long an arc. Uh, there we go. 2,000 gold. Oh, 2,000. Oh, Ooh. yippee! <laughs> Sweet. That's a lot of money. I can take the gold and put it in a different pocket. I've got a spare purse. <laughs> and everyone can see me doing it. Well, to me, it does not matter. 2,000 gold, and your contract is complete. And he hands it over to... Well, he just puts... He uh, reaches down, you hear some rummaging... 
a chest sort of flips it open, counts out several, counts out about 200 platinum, puts in a to a uh, small leather sort of purse, ties it, and then just drops it on the desk, putting the closing the case and putting it about down back underneath uh, the chest. Sorry, down back underneath. All right. Well, your contract is complete. All right. And you will find yourself no longer bound to it. Pleasure doing business. Good sir. I shall inform the master. He will be most pleased. You should get someone there hired with magic. <laughs> yes, well. You do remember who hired you, right? Yes. Just not by, him, by himself. Especially if that cult turns up. Or the dragon. All the oh, oh, we know about the dragon seen... and the elemental portal. Oh, we're interested in the ruler. Yeah. Nothing other part of the elemental portal. But you saw the dragon. Oh yes. Ah, well, good to know that she's still alive. E e e ele elemental portal. Um, yes, the dragon's the guardian. She? Yes. Oh. Okay. Just a side note for the business pointer. Good advice. Maybe giving some history and uh, tips and maybe what enemies the groups could be encountering before they sign the contract. If they agree to the contract, it should be their own prerogative to find out what they're facing. I, I, uh, as, soon as, you should... as soon as you asked, I was like, yeah, that's how he's going to respond, isn't he? <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Ah. All right. I and he starts tugging on the on the on the skirt to like let's go. This is enough social interaction for today. Lucian pulls up his hood and from his cloak and then leaves. Well, have a good day. Hmm. You always have my hood up. So everyone go pass him on the head and leave. <laughs> oh no. Why are you told me? Uh, as you as you go to pat him on his head, he's like, Sniffing you. Or just somewhat, somewhat accepting the pats and then sort of shaking his head slightly. All right, go on then. Unless you have any other... Uh, any other business here? No. Wait, yeah. Bye-bye. Um, Davina leaves and starts trying to uh, now attempting to play some crazy riffs on a dulcet minute, a dulcet nolier. Everyone could get 300 and then there's 200 for the party. All right. The easiest way Sounds to good. 300 Sounds gold. Good. Mm -hmm. 300 gold. Whoa. Well, so you know how much gold I've had the entire. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be three hundred gold. It would be thirty platinum. Okay. Yep. How do we add it? Thirty platinum. Because okay. Thirty platinum. I want you to I, uh, track of exactly what coins you have. I went from having oh. forty gold to thirty platinum. Gold that he gave us. No, he gave you platinum. Okay. All right, that's Should so I... much better for my weight. <laughs> he gave you. He gave you two hundred platinum. Okay. Should I add the? Extra platinum to my account. Uh, you know what? Why don't I ma just make another channel called uh, Party Funds and Bag of. There you go. Stick it in there. Oh, good. All right. So. Okay. Sano is gonna tell everyone that he's wandering off to sell his knickknacks of useless stuff that he's picked up. <laughs> He's gonna. Do you wish someone to come with you? He's already walking. I'll off. go with him. He's not. He's not listening. He's walking through his bag. As I, know. Uh, I follow behind him. Hmm. All right. So he's gonna go to a uh, weaponsmith. All right. Uh, he's gonna go first. Given a bit of time, you are capable of finding a weaponsmith. All right. He's gonna walk up and on in. Take a deep breath. 
and walk through the door? I assume there's a door to this place, or maybe it's an outdoor. Uh, yeah, thing. there is. There's okay. um, there there is a door. It's uh, the shop is a sort of small squat shop. There's a open forge nearby, but there's no one currently working it. Uh, there is, however, a door open into a interior which appears to be lined with multiple uh, different swords of different varieties and a couple of different shields. All right. Is there anyone at the desk? Hello. Indeed, there is. There is a female dwarf. Hi. Hello. Um, I've I've, I've got some stuff to sell and something I want to buy. So. Well, uh, what are you looking to buy? Uh, a shield. Please. A shield. Uh, we we do multiple of those. Uh, for your size, uh, I'm sure we can find something. Any preference in material? Uh, um. Size? Thinking tower, buckler, regular? Um. Steel? Uh, we do have a few wooden ones as well. I see you seem to be one who doesn't wear that much metal. Uh, yeah, um, 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 okay, so, if you have metal, is it, like, magical metal, like this, and he ting-ting on his, uh, shield and shakes his knuckle, because, ow, that hurt! Do you mean on his armor? Yeah, so, uh, armor, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, we're talking, we're, we're talking, we're talking, uh, good old steel. Alright wood then and can you explain like the different shields and stuff and he's going to start fishing out the stuff that he's going to sell <laughs> well you see a tower shield and with this she literally picks up essentially a sheet of steel which is taller than her with relative ease and just <clears throat> you see it covers me almost entirely for a normal uh, for a normal heighted humanoid which she kind of peers around the shield which we're not <laughs> yeah uh, it would cover the vast majority of them. You'll be able to sort of crouch down behind it. Quite difficult to use, I might add. Takes a fair bit of training. <laughs> so <laughs> She stored it on the wall, Odd. She stored it on the wall. Okay, so just as a player thing, would that would my would my profici I don't current proficiency with shields I, I don't allow think me to wield this? Or would I uh, need I to I don't think you'll be able to wield a tower shield, especially not one of this size. You'll be able to wield normal shields and bucklers. And essentially what you have currently is a buckler. It's only plus one to your um okay it's okay. only plus one to your uh ac a tower shield will be plus four but you have uh but i'm it's sure. difficult to wield and it limits you in certain things and then you've got your normal shield which is just plus two all right what's the advantage of having a buckler a buckler is just it's plus one but it's lighter so um it allows so rather it essentially it doesn't take up your hand it's like plus one but it doesn't take up your hand it is still a bit restricting, so essentially you could sort of still dual wield, and you can cast without the warcaster feet and still have a shield and a sword. Ow. Okay, 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 uh, cool. If you're right. if you're carrying your shield around, you either um you either have to you have to have one hand free to be able to cast, unless you have the warcaster feet. Yeah. So a shield takes up your hand, whereas like a buckler, you'll be able to sort of cast without dropping it and such, and wield a light weapon in it. But okay, right, okay, um. Right, okay, as the lady's explaining this, he's going to grab out a crossbow bolt. I don't know why he has that in there. A dagger. Um, <laughs> he, um, a spear. <laughs> um, he looks and says, you're not a person that would do leather armor, would you? And he holds up his old leather armor. Well, that technically there's no leather. Actually, no, no, it, it, well, I'm just it was gonna get it. it was just your old, it was your old bit of wood. I'm gonna actually just remove that entirely from my thing because I've technically used that for a shield and now <sighs> I'm getting rid of the shield. So, like, my dagger, a crossbow, just one crossbow bolt, just one, a singular crossbow bolt. <laughs> um, his <laughs> <is> hunting trap. <laughs> Um, that's that's fucking heavy to lug around. Um, wait, did you pick that up? Uh, I don't know. I've ticked it off as I have. Oh no! I've ticked it off as if I have. I don't know. If I did. Well, I I can offer you five copper pieces for the crossbow bolt. Okay, that's five. Um, so five copper pieces for the crossbow bolt. Yep. The hunting trap. Um. 
I can offer you four gold pieces for that. It needs a bit of work. It seems to have been a, a little bit of warm by a bit of time and such. So four gold pieces for that. Okay. Uh, what else were you flogging her? <laughs> um, there was the crossbow bolt, a dagger, and a spear, and then the hunting trap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, the dagger, well, I'm probably going to have to melt it down and reuse it, so I'll offer you uh, five silver pieces. Eight silver, did you say? Five silver pieces. Five. Hang on, I'm just, I'm just going to type this down. Four gold. <laughs> Four five. gold, five copper, five silver. All right. What else? <laughs> and the spear, she's going to pick up, uh, sort of look over it. And, uh, and unfortunately this... <sighs> Um, and four silver for the spear. Okay then, easy. Um. <laughs> uh, th thank you. And are you looking at buying a shield? Um. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um. All right. Well, that will cost you ten gold pieces. Uh, depending on which one I get. Hang on. I'm just trying to figure out which one do I want. Do I want? Ah. Uh... Uh, I'll take a I'll take a normal shield. All right, a normal shield. I'll be ten gold pieces. Uh, we do have one wood in your size. Awesome. Okay, let me just tick off the minus ten gold, <laughs> and then I'll add all the rest of the stuff. Now right, I've you got a shield. Add, you can add a shield, and we can reset your armor class back down to because I was manually overriding it. Yeah. All right. Yay. So your armor class is 16, when you get the shield, it'll be 8. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, that is Sano's wee shopping trip. Is there anything else which other people would like to do? I'm just hanging out with Sano. Sano's all just going to run around and see if there's any place interesting she can head to. Alright. Have we been uh, in this? Have you guys been in this town before? They have not. Nope. None of you have. Oh. We don't mm -hmm. know what the fuck is going on. do 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 this is actually um, furthest north. Uh, everyone but Boar and Sano has been. Well, I spent most of my time in the south, did I? Uh, well, we'll we'll tag along with far Agnes off. to find an inn. More All right. east inside. Uh, so what's our scene doing? I don't know. <laughs> it's not super busy, but it's busy. I'm tired. Oh, I'll buy more ham. Okay, but this time we're doing something different. We're buying two lots. All the piece for him now. And then another piece I want to turn into like, I want to like smoke and dry out so that it'll last a while. Uh, you, um, you, can get, you can get cured and smoked ham. Hell uh, yeah. For... A, for a um, for the two different pieces of ham, it will cost you one silver the total. Sweet, thank you. Uh, all right, Seven Gal, uh, running around. Uh, the town seems to be relatively quiet. Uh, running around the town, you don't find anything uh, too interesting. Sorry, when I mean quiet, I mean like sort of of interest for you. Um, uh, there's nothing too interesting. Uh, it's got you know a couple of shops, uh, a library, the odd temple. Um, however, uh, running around the outskirts, you do notice out sort of to the uh, uh, northeast of the town, uh, you do notice what appears to be your sister. Oh. So I'm gonna go, like, there's the flying tackle thing, and then, like, slides right in front of her, like, hey, sister! <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of run up, pounce, <laughs> tackle her, and you hear, ugh! Hello there. And you notice that you have just spilt uh, essentially water and a load of silver dust for her. And... Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Simon Gull gives the sad kitty eyes like, I'm sorry. <sighs> no worries, no worries. I've already created several. <laughs> ah, well, glad to see that you finally made it here. And with that, um, uh, uh, Agnes and Lucian, you across a uh, small sort of quaint inn. Uh, it is called uh, Dawnbreaker. <laughs> Dawn. Quaint. I like it. 
Very fitting. <laughs> uh, inside, there's one or two patrons, and a uh, half elven woman tending bar. Five rooms? Yeah. He's a raw. God, uh, wrong tab. <laughs> Actually, four rooms. Okay. All <laughs> uh, right. Uh, well, four rooms will cost you. Uh, uh, two gold pieces for a night. Two meals included. <sighs> the uh, the four on the second floor should be uh, suitable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Two gold pieces for the uh, for four rooms for a night. Oh <laughs> uh, no worry, worry. And after getting some of his things settled in, Lucian's going to head back out into town and look for a place where he can get a hold of writing equipment, or writing stuff, paper, pen, etc. Tano is also going to, when he finds Agnes and Adan, he's going to give them all but one of the books. That being the, uh, the spe special secret magic book thing. And so he puts five books into the, um, Bag of, bag of holding? Yeah. Oh, that makes my Karen rank so much better. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, back pain, you are finally going to be gone! <sighs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that Sarno reached his uh, encumbrance limit. <laughs> yep. Uh, actually, he'll give everyone... He'll give... Uh, four of the books back. He's gonna keep. Wait, why do I have six books on me? I've only got five listed here. <laughs> no idea. He's confused. Oh, I'm so confused. So confused. Five books. There you go. <laughs> In the bag holding. <laughs> There's the, yeah, there's the bag of holding chat which you can put it in. So, cool. I like how you say five books, but you've only put four names. Anyway. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't know what the fifth book come from, but... <laughs> Alright. So, uh... If Boar's just following Sona around and you guys made it to the inn, uh, I assume our scene... Agnes at the inn, Lucian, mm -hmm. going out and getting stuff to write with. Uh, mm -hmm. You can find a general goods store, and they uh, they can sell you some writing equipment. Uh, uh, if I remember what I was... Yeah, uh, books are relatively pricey. Um, uh, yes, uh, books are relatively pricey, or you could get some parchment. Um, oh, parchment. Okay, uh, how many sheets of parchment do you think? How many, how much, um, per sheet? One silver piece per sheet. I'll get ten. All right, so a gold. And, um... I will subtract one gold. Uh, gold for the parchment, uh, you can add ten sheets of parchment... 
Uh, <laughs> and I am trying to remember the price. Uh, and by remember, I mean find it because brain no worky. Uh, it's late at night, to be fair. For you. Eh, it's only 11. Uh, probably not that late yet, then. Uh, do I open it? Uh, we, uh, I guess we'll put probably um, uh, probably an additional gold piece for the ink and a quill. Okay. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, oh, God. Uh, it's five gold pieces. My apologies for an ink and a quill. Okay, so subtract five gold pieces from my yeah. inventory. Thank okay. you. All right. Uh, seven go. Since I think that's everything else sorted out, back yep. to ye. Uh, anything in this town triggering things with the spirit? Do you mean Dayron? Uh, he seems a tad distracted and sort of glancing around. Um, upon asking him subtly, he informs you that he doesn't recall ever being here before. However, uh, a name is coming forth in his mind. Uh, he believes Quinlan, and he has absolutely no idea what it has any relation to, and I shall put that into the chat so you know how it is spelled. Hey, actually, I think you got it quite well. Yeah, you did. And we have an on-stream footage. Yeah, you got that exact jam. Let's That's try. Yay. Well done. That means my pronunciation for once was correct, or you're just learning how I pronounce <laughs> if it's a ladder, be worried. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Savanga. You have tackled your sister, and you have managed to spill the essentially the uh, components of creating holy water onto yourself and her. Savanga does the dog like shake to shake everything off. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you could just use a towel. She kind of flicks just... her whiskers and then starts licking her paw and starts sort of. <laughs> that one is now just extra poofy. <laughs> you have poofed up. Well, it's good to see you, sister. Seems you survived the trip and your little excursion. Yeah. It was an interesting experience, especially since dragon cultists are rather crazy. Oh, I'm glad I haven't had the pleasure of meeting any of them. If you do meet one, if you find a sword, if you find one waving a sword around, can I have that back? I will certainly make note to try and remember to do so. Because mm -hmm. it's a gift to a friend and he stole it. Right, okay. Wait, I assume what? the rest of your party's here somewhere. Yeah, I'm wandering around. Agnes probably went to get an in. She usually does that. Right, Although well, you well. might need to go find Arsene since she may be stuck frozen in fear. <laughs> right, well, she managed She managed to run Mabel Tide. I think she'll be somewhat all right here. The cross is a bit smaller. Uh, I shall yeah. clean up some of this mess. And she kind of glances at the uh, spill contents and then also quickly scoops up what appears to be about three or four bottles of that uh, sort of caught water. <laughs> she thinks fans are getting drunk. <laughs> ah, one and the same, aren't they? Yeah, pretty much. Plan to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like exactly what Agnes says. Every time we go to a town, the first thing she does is go look for an inn. <laughs> There's only when Lucian gets back, he's actually going to be getting a drink, too. <laughs> That's why you're the mother witch. <laughs> <laughs> is it? All right. I think Boar's the oldest, isn't he? Uh, since we just arrived and are all scattered about, do you want to go meet up in the evening or the morning? Oh, well, I think uh, the, the evening might work. Um, 
glad you guys settled down a bit. I'll uh, clean myself up. And with that, she sort of quickly mutters a few things under her breath and sort of um, grabs her holy symbol. And you see all the water just sort of coating her, just kind of poof, just disappear off. That would have been useful with the sand. <laughs> I can only really do that with water. Mm. Anyway, uh, do you know what inn you're staying in, or am I going to have to go knocking on doors? I'll go running around and find them. Uh, and with that, she okay. takes off and starts running like her, running does the. I, uh, I'll tell her when she gets back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how long does it take me to find them? Uh, roll an investigation check, seven go. Would uh, Cerno and Boar have one. passed any uh, shops that sell items of the enchanted variety? Uh, well, investigation check, you guys, as well. Investigation! That's, that's a burp. Pardon me, sorry. That's an 11. That is a burp. Yep. Roll d20 plus 2. Investing... Brigading. There we go. Investing. <laughs> Investing. Brigading. Uh, from what you what you can tell, Sano, there doesn't appear to be. Uh, there's a um. There's another alchemist who's sort of selling herbs and uh, a few basic healing potions, but you don't find anything else. Uh, Boar is able to weed out sort of. Uh, there's an odds and ends sort of store which appears to be selling. Uh, Mostly mundane, random sort of junk, uh, but there it does seem to have uh, one or two things which might be considered. I want to uh, go look at the store that sells junk. I mean, it's which has the magic in it as well, but you know. <laughs> so, wait, there's a shop. I mean, were you literally about to list a shop that has magic stuff in it? No, I was going to say it's, it's essentially a shop with odds and ends and bits of junk, but it does appear to have one or two uh, in, one or two possibly interesting items in there which may be magical we'll check that out all right um well it does indeed have a lot of junk uh but so no shoulders of... are starting to feel really heavy again <laughs> <laughs> um however uh, he is a you are able to find uh, one or two interesting items uh, which uh, <laughs> which um, might be useful. Uh, there is a sort of diamond with what appears to be a dark red blotch in the middle of it. There is um, what else? Uh, uh, there uh, there appears to be a weird sort of wire frame with uh, glass lenses placed within them. Are these glasses? <laughs> are they just glasses and we <laughs> just don't know what they are? Uh, they seem to be slightly different. Uh, you've seen one or two people wearing glasses before, but these appear to be slightly different and catch your eye. <laughs> no, I wouldn't just go, yeah, these are glasses and they're mad. <laughs> 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 Not quite that cruel. <laughs> So there's the diamond with the red blotch, and then these glasses, inverted commas. Uh, and there is what appears to be a uh, simple chain necklace with a battered and beaten tusk of some sort, sort of a tooth or some sort attached to it. Uh, it's sort of like an iron peg screwed into it, and then the chain runs through that. What kind of tooth is it? Ah, uh, make an age check. Nature check. Uh, uh, not, not, not. There we go. Remember, a That's a <laughs> natural one. I should have gone with the map. <laughs> Sorry. <gasps> it's the mythical tooth of a land shark. <laughs> Can I make it? Does it feel enchanted in some way? It seems to have some semblance, Kane, about it. There's a there's a shop owner, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him what. The chain, what the necklace does, what the diamond does, and then what the glasses do. 
if he knows. <laughs> I, was, she, what they? I was about to say, boy's going to put on the glasses, like start looking through them to see if anything... Uh, well, boy, putting on the glasses, they are slightly too small for your head. So you get a fair bit of pressure on either side of your face. Uh, looking through them, they don't appear to do anything. They don't magnify anything. They just appear to be plain glass in it. Uh, you approach the shopkeep, and it appears to be a... Um... Oh, God. There we go. Hmm? Eeny, meeny, miny, Uh... <laughs> it, it appears to be a uh, sort of elderly elf. Alright. I ask, what does the necklace and the glasses and then the orb gold diamond thing do if he knows? Uh, oh, well, the, um, the glasses were given to me by an adventurer. They are said to help curb one's fear. As for the tooth, uh, I'm not entirely sure. It sort of interested me. Uh, came in a... Hmm, what was it? It was a, 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 a warrior, I think. Uh, rather coated in blood, if I recall. So was that. I had to clean it up a fair bit. <laughs> uh, said something about uh, bringing you away from untimely demises, perhaps? What was the other item? The diamond with the red blotch in it. Oh, there's that! Well, now that, I do recall. That is called a bloodstone. And once you get used to its interesting properties, it will lead you and tell you exactly where target is target you see that red dot inside of it and at this point he sort of picks up the diamond and is moving it around um and there is the sort of red dot seems to shift ever so slightly uh-huh yes well this this is blood from some creature, and when you are used to the arcane magics, you can discern where it is. Do you know what the creature is? Not a clue! <sighs> so, the glasses help calm your fear? Apparently. Oh, cheers. Thanks. Can I make an insight check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is he bullshit in any of this? <laughs> make, an ins make an insight check. God damn, what the fuck is my insight? Wait, I'm natural 20! <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> Go on, Ninja, roll yours. 21. <laughs> so I know he seems to be telling the truth about all of it. He just <laughs> does not remember the these sales. <laughs> I was I was just about to say the shopkeeper probably tr rolled a nat one. He was trying to figure this out though. <laughs> he he doesn't appear to be bullshitting you. He does generally unsure, but pretty sure in what he's saying. Okay. How much for all these three? All oh, three? Oh, God, no. What the. Stone is relatively rare. Um, we would price that at about four thousand gold pieces. I take the bloodstone and I set it back on the shelf. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, right. Um, the the wire framed glasses you're looking at about two hundred and seventy gold pieces. I Ooh. set back the glasses as well. What was the other item again? Uh, the necklace. <laughs> oh, right! And that you're looking at absolutely 1,200 gold pieces. Ah! Even even with the glasses, I'm terror that's terrifying. Perhaps you want to put the glasses on? I'm not After here. hearing these prices. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
A thousand. Arcane items are rare to come by. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a thousand, <laughs> like two thousand two hundred, a thousand two hundred gold for the necklace. Uh, for the necklace? No, the uh, uh wait. Uh, shit. Mm. Uh, for the neck, yeah, necklace was one thousand two. going to put it back <laughs> very gently <laughs> wow it, as you put it there he goes oh you can throw it about it doesn't really do much damage from anything the part of me really wants to test that but i'm not going to do that because i'll have to fucking pay for it uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, well we know it's here right right ball yeah yeah. Is there anything else you might be interested in? Uh, I'm gonna look for another hand axe. If they have one here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you find a stick and a couple of uh, flint, which you might be able to fashion into a hand axe. But there I... is no hand axe in this shop. I feel bad just walking in here and not buying anything. Is there anything else yeah, in here? Yeah, is there, like, anything, like, simple we could get? Like, is there any, um, god said... memorabilia? Like, uh, could I, is there anything from the store we're here? Or is this, um, like, a little thrift shop that we're just looking at? You're literally just looking at a thrift shop, really. Um, I figured that would. Um, a thrift, the most expensive thrift shop out there. Oh, <laughs> hey, arcane items are rare to come by. Like, oh, shit. E even in this world where they're actually, like, uh, where they are quite, I don't want to say free, uh, where they're actually relatively um, easy to find, they're, like, they're expensive as hell to make. They take time, they take money, they take resources, they take spell slots. Like, creating these items is a long, drawn-out process, and that's yeah. really what's reflected in their price, especially the fact that you actually need to to have a relatively decent understanding of the arcane to be able to make these things and <laughs> and to be able to like mass produce these items you would just need like a factory of wizards just constantly enchanting all day every day to <laughs> even sort of get close to batch production <laughs> um, yeah is there like any little thing like knickknack that stands out uh among the rest there's a uh, there's a there's a small set of um what appear to be sort of uh, ivory carvings of um different depictions of uh, gods there appears to be a sort of small ivory carved dragon a small sort of ivory carved angry storm cloud um sort of carved sort of like sun like shape there's about uh, there's about 5 of these uh, clearly once part of a set and now greatly diminished in number, but uh, the... upon asking the uh, old elf, uh, he tells you that uh, it's probably about three gold. So no, nods very vigorously. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we'll... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, so you hand over the three gold and you get the ivory carving Akatosh cord. Um, Hold on, let uh, me just remove that three gold from my inventory real quick. There we go. <laughs> what did I hit? Oh, so you, you get the ivory gold. carvings of Akatosh cord, um, Pelor, Obad High, and Saint Cuthbert. All right. <laughs> uh, so Akatosh is the is the dragon. Uh, Cord is obviously the angry storm cloud. Pelor is the sun. Uh, Obad High it appears to be, uh, strangely enough, just a set of several pillars. And Saint Cuthbert is a um, is sort of like a, a very intricately carved sort of mace with its head down onto the sort of little base plate. Think of like the D and D miniatures. It's so sort of, they got like small little base plates, which were probably like the base of the ivory bit, and then it was carved down into this. They're they're very well made. Yeah, yeah, that that's worth the gold. Yeah. All right, and we leave, say thank you, and get the hell out of that expensive ass <laughs> shop. <laughs> <laughs> you want 
make a trip back to the blacksmiths? Um, yeah, if you still want those axes? I still kind of want an a, a hand axe again. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, a hand axe? Uh, that's relatively fine. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, a hand axe will set you back five pieces. Five what pieces? Gold. Five gold. Okay, I buy a hand axe again. Woohoo! Uh, Alright, you have another hand axe. Cerno will, uh, since we're back at the blacksmith, he'll go screw it and he'll buy some uh, arrows as well for this some blacksmith arrows? shop that he's been forced to take. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I might need to get arrows. I need to buy more arrows, too. I... <laughs> uh, Alright, who's getting arrows? Me, please. I'll it's take... one gold for 20 arrows. Can I'll I... take a quiver of arrows. Oh, and a quiver for you is uh, a gold. Alright, so that'll so be buy some arrows, quiver. too. So, uh, so Sano gold. will need to buy a quiver and uh, 20 arrows. 20 arrows fit into a quiver. Right, uh, so, so that's two gold for Sano. You can carry more arrows. It's just that they don't aren't in the quiver, and it'll, uh, so like you could go, you could buy a bun, you could clean out the entire town of arrows <laughs> if you wanted to, but yeah. you can only have like twenty on you at a time. Like a certain someone in, did in the quiver. Ah, bless. Can I sell my crossbow and crossbow bolts? Hmm? Can I sell my crossbow and crossbow bolts? Sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, what crossbow is it? It's a... A light crossbow. Yeah, a light... And I have uh, 13 bolts. Uh, a light crossbow, you'll get about 15 gold for that. And 13 bolts? Um, 13 bolts. Uh, that will be... Oh, God. Hang on. Divided by... Uh, that'll be 65 copper pieces. Mm, how many golds was that? Sorry for the crossbow. Fifteen gold and sixty. Okay, thank you. Just doing mental maths. Oof. Oh, you can not... literally type in at the bottom and then click add, and it adds. Yeah, I kind of realised that after I'd done the maths, and was like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> a thing. Oh well, too late. Use my brain instead. All right, and it's as I said, one gold, twenty arrows. I go ahead and do that, and I guess add twenty more arrows. Indeed. And then proceed to head back into the inn because I'm sick of shopping. <laughs> shopping episode. It really is a shopping episode. <sighs> All right. Uh, is there anything else people do? Um, I think this has a question. Oh. Uh, uh, Wait. Base of the ivory where it connected to the face of the animal? Hmm. I am worrying about it. And uh, Agnes... You had a, uh, your, um, you was, uh, your crossbow and crossbow bolts were part of your starting equipment, aren't they? Yeah, then you only have one, it's fine. Alrighty. Yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't tabbed into the frickin', um, what do I call it, page. <laughs> I have too many tabs open at this moment in time. You usually do. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30. 31 different tabs. Okay, you need help. Nah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> hello to the person who said hi in chat. I am... I am an I guy. An I guy? Oh god, I don't know. Hello and welcome to this shopping episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything else which people want to do? Um, do any of us bump? I think 
Um, yeah, if do I any bump of us into, any to bump of into Kimi or any of the others? Uh, well, with Seven Girls, uh, where was Seven Girls' investigation? Ah, right, 13. Uh, with Seven Girls' uh, investigation, she does eventually run into you guys. Uh, you inform her of the inn, and she rushes back out to go get her to go inform her sister. Yep. Uh, unless there's anything else which you guys particularly want to do, um, do you make your way to the inn, settle down, get a drink each? Yeah, just one. No, me. I'm good. Drink. Uh, well, the uh, the ale will cost you um, copper pieces each. A copper so piece what? each, or four, 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 four copper four, pieces four. per drink. Oh, yeah. Uh, Evan goes just eating and then going right back to t attempting to create a rock ballad. <laughs> All right. So minus uh, four copper pieces. Yes. Uh, ah! I got an error. <laughs> I oh, just did something. Well done. Uh, no. Alrighty. So, uh, as okay. Seven Girl attempts to write this ballad, uh, okay. The the uh, that probably took the vast majority of the afternoon. Uh, the charging around. Yeah, the, the cats in their the cats in their metal face. <laughs> <laughs> or rock and roll not sure which um, <laughs> uh, oh god um, <laughs> the uh... <laughs> right so the uh, a bit of time passes also going out to shopping, coming back. Uh, it is probably getting getting towards evening, and you're asked, so, um, you know, if you want your meals right now. Your evening meal. Please. Food. All right. Yeah. Half elven uh, woman bustles off into the kitchen to uh, start preparing. Uh, which is probably around the time to which Kimi does indeed enter into the Dawnbreaker tavern. <laughs> Oh, God, purple. <laughs> I learned about this today. <laughs> Jam has limits, apparently. Apparently you have found them. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, actually, knowing my dad, we might have that song somewhere. <laughs> oh, Wait, are we talking oh. about the one guy in the, in the Could, quote? I have a question. Doing ACDC uh, Thunderstruck. Talking about that one. I got one. What was your question? About Sandman with the butt bagpipes. Oh my god, I love that one so much. Didn't I share that a while ago? Probably. We were shipping up to Boston <laughs> and also uh, into Sandman, which was actually really fucking cool. Anyways. <laughs> So, unless there's anything else, Kimi enters the tavern as you guys are beginning to chow down. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Alright, you two. Settle, settle. <laughs> Order in my world, please. Oh, wait, no, that never happened. Um, yeah, we live in it. <laughs> Chaos. Yes, that was your first mistake. No, I don't think then so. Then your second one would bring me into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you guys settle down to eat, Kimi does enter. Ah, well, I'm glad to see you made it all. Hello, sister. And she sort of scratches behind you behind the ear. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, Purple is indeed part cat. <laughs> so glad to see that you all made it and it appears you've made a new friend indeed no one going to bother to introduce me 
This is Lucia. This is my sister Kimi. She helped bring Boar back. Um, pleasure to meet you. So I know it's how we hadn't told Lucian about the whole Kimmy being needed yet, have we? Yeah, you, um, you did mention it before. You mentioned that you had someone which you needed to get to and things for. And I think Savangel also mentioned that Kimi was waiting for you guys. No, but we haven't told him that Kimi brought Boar back from being dead. No, apart from just now, which Savangel mm. literally just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, nice to make your acquaintance. Uh, I assume you'll be helping these fine people to repay a certain favor. Indeed. I have a bit of a debt of my own to pay. Ah, well. Let us get down to it. So, when you so graciously accepted this in return, uh, it appears, uh, well, I've managed to do a bit more research. It appears that they are held up in a in a uh, lair uh, not held up. It appears the source of the internet, which are attacking the vast majority of northern road towards Axenmouth and the rest of the Sword Coast. Uh, it appears they're coming from a, a cave somewhere between here and Vinedale. Uh, this cave, uh, from what I could tell, how close I could get in the scrying which I've been able to do, uh, it doesn't appear to be naturally made. Made by what? I'm not entirely sure, though. Uh, it, there's no mines in the area, so at a little bit of a loss for uh, who or what made it and why. Uh, but this appears to be the source of the undead, and uh, I do not believe it is just undead. I, it's uh, someone or something which is uh, trying to control them, bringing them back, that sort of thing. Haven't been able to find out too much, however. Uh, some of them are protected by arcane means against detection, uh, against scrying, and, uh, well, I don't get too close. That is what you guys are for. Has Cerno. Cerno knows how undead are made, right? Like, they're turned undead. The dead are turned into the undead, yeah. right? He knows that much, at least. Uh. Does he have. Prof Or just from fighting undead. Uh, Little we have in the past. I will be back in one quick second, guys. Uh, Sono is aware that undead can be rotting shambling corpses. Okay. He'll pipe up from eating his meal. Are there any graveyards near this cave thing? Um... <laughs> Uh, not that I'm entirely aware. You don't need a graveyard to get undead, I'm afraid. And they've, uh, some of the bodies have been going missing from, to, uh, from the trade caravans that get killed as well. Oh. Source of these bodies. So they kill and then make them into their army. Well, uh, that's normally how most necromancers work, yes. Each one oh. falls, joins their rank. And hmm. as far as I'm aware, there appears to be a rather large problem of it happening to the northeast. Nate, you went really robo there for a second. Aww. It's fine for me. I heard it yeah, and decided it to ignore it. Not my problem. <laughs> nope. Not at all. Not you my fault either. This. I think I think Abby is talking about Nick. Ab Abby's talking, not us. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Nick. I know. But Abby's involved in both sides of the story. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I'm aware of. She <laughs> might be somehow. Nick's Abby's and... aware. The characters aren't. Nix and Arsene have no knowledge of each other. No. No, 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 it. So, how how many are there? Um... Uh, exact numbers. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the uh, they. Sent out patrols quite regularly, uh, going out trying to scavenge, kill, whatever they can. Cause chaos, it seems. There seem to be any real set pattern to their attacks. Uh, Were you able to get a good look at any of these necromancers, by chance? No, I, I have no clue what is uh, bringing them back. Whatever it is, is uh, deep in the cave, and I couldn't get into 
I said, protected by a protected fire arcane means against my forms of scrying. Okay. Uh, uh, I would advise uh, maybe trying to get into the cave when some of the patrols are out, less to deal with, and going in there, finding what is causing their appearance. It may be necromancers, it could be a portal to the abyss, I'm not entirely sure. Whatever it is, we need to close it. And sort of Do you have any sort of schedule when these uh, patrols go out? Uh, Schedule-wise, uh, not one which I could entirely make out. They did seem to stick to some uh, shifts, uh, but they didn't seem to be efficiently efficient at staying to them. Uh, it seemed to be mm. a sort of one going out in the morning, uh, well, a couple going out in the morning, a couple going out in the afternoon. Uh, whether the others had come back or not didn't really seem to matter, and as I said, it was sort of sporadic rather than a true schedule. Okay. How strong are I'll they? Don't wow. <laughs> <laughs> talk with your mouth full. I'll talk with my mouth full if I want. Mm, you yeah. not if you have any manners. Gross. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I need to Does start Therno saying... accidentally spit out half his food when he does that? <laughs> so, roll a dexterity check. Oh, Alright. Oh, While this oh, is going on, Lucian's gonna take another sip of his drink. Agnes so is gonna have to start doing the whole children uh, shall be seen and not heard at the table. Right <laughs> now. Uh, deck, deck. Let me just double check decks. You're actually making him yeah. do it. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's a six. <laughs> Uh, oh. Just falls out onto the plate. I just look away immediately. That's good. Do I, do I have a utensil? We have utensils, right? Yeah, you, ha you have utensils. He's gonna... just, you gonna. <laughs> I just went <laughs> onto your plate. <laughs> Back to the mat. Maybe sort of wrinkles her nose slightly. Hmm, maybe not. How much time do you think we have at the minimum to deal with this problem? Well, Quite considering it took you multiple days to get here, the problem a week and a half now? Oh, ooh, uh, no, not a week and a half. We're talking two weeks now. It was a week and a half when I met you guys. Um, the sooner the better. The current, uh, currently no one is actually going to this road. Uh, causing some trouble with trading, uh, especially for Lake Cross and up to the uh, more northern parts of this continent. Most people tend not to like taking the Russian planes, since, well, there's a lot of wild things on there. Yep. You got that right. Um. Mm. 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 You talking like an asshole again? <laughs> no, he talks, and then he takes a giant bite of food. Okay, good. All the same, good to know that no, get a clear enough idea of how much time we got. Not implying waiting the last minute. Like you said, the sooner it gets resolved, the better. Oh, and definitely. Oh, definitely. Did these undead have any weaknesses? Uh, well... Weaknesses? Not really, but, um... Some of them can be quite resistant... Uh, I wouldn't attempt using anything sort of poison-based. They're pretty good to near enough not affected by it most of the time. Uh, some of them can be somewhat resistant to uh, non-magic-based attacks. What about Very... light? Ah, they can see in the dark. They can see the light. Uh, I great. mean, would it hurt them? Ah, well, in, uh, not that I know of you come across ones which like to hide in the dark, maybe it would be a slight inconvenience for them to be in bright light. As far as I'm aware, uh, there is nothing which is exactly weak to being in light. Okay. Are they all of the same species, so to speak? I, I can possibly say. The ones which were out appear to be a, a mix of sort of Lower, your lower end undead, uh, sort of basic zombies, skeletons. I think I might have seen a few, however, hanging around 
and uh, I, it appears to be a bit of a mix and match. Okay, good enough. Um. Right. Uh, unless you have any other questions, is there anything else you wish to tell us? Uh well, they take su- uh, the creatures take supplies, so we can assume that some th- down. Uh, they have equipment. Well, the, the caravans they attack, they take they take supplies from. It can be food, uh, equipment. So, uh, as far as I'm aware, there must be something living. In- Among the undead, would there have been any that would have looked like, uh, would have originally looked like adventurers? Oh, more than certainly. Also good to know. I'm sure you guys are quite capable of it, and... Uh, wise enough to not go charging it. Completely unknown. <laughs> uh, I just look at four. I would advise a bit of discretion. Lucy is just going to take another slow drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would advise... Considering once upon a time, essentially when... We had our first encounter with said cultist. I was the one who ran in and sliced the first guy. Uh-huh. Really? So, yeah. uh, they they tend to be uh, they tend to be other uh, not always the most observant and rarely the most intelligent. Okay. Any spellcasters that have been obvious? Well, there's some form of arcane magic protecting. Apart from that, coming from the exact cave. Well, I mean, it's quite powerful magic to be able to avoid being scried upon. I mean, there are shambling zombies and skeleton things. Uh, I haven't seen any particularly fluid in the arcane arts, but then again, most of the patrols are just attacking traveling merchants. To know. How far away is it again? Um. Uh, you're talking about uh, you're talking about probably a couple of days travel. Mm. Poor. You should go going tomorrow morning. Then. That Agreed. would be a good idea. Yeah, it would be. Um. Do you know any potion sellers in this town before we leave? Uh, there are a couple, and I did happen to one or two items that may be useful. I'm, after all, not going to send you in completely unarmed. Useful. And with that, she produces the three, uh, the three bottles of holy water which she was working on. <laughs> Would have been four. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no charge since I am asking you. Water? Uh, so someone can uh, uh <laughs> water that has been blessed by cord. Uh, not cord. Fuck. Cord is pause. God. <laughs> <laughs> Would I know what holy water would be given um, where no, I'm from? Uh, you won't roll an intelligence check. Uh, D twenty again. Yeah, I don't think you're trained in. Re- Any check is a D twenty plus something. So it'll oh, be a D twenty plus three for you. All right, thank you. It is really helping with the D the dice roller. No worries. All right, uh, yeah, so D twenty plus three for you. <laughs> uh, well, you've heard. You've heard. You heard one or two friends, um, you heard... Oh, shit. I have too many tabs on! Um, you're pretty sure you heard, uh, during your times on the different continents, you heard, uh, one or two mutters, talkings, holy water, you're not entirely sure exactly what it does. 
I wasn't know, part of the faction that used holy water. Uh, no, not really. Yeah. It was uh, not something that was really in your expertise. Makes sense. Uh, this use it against uh, undead. Also, creatures from some of the lower planes of existence, they tend not to like it. Lower planes of existence? But any of us know what that means? <laughs> uh, again, uh, there is some, there's some sort of common knowledge. Planes, uh, anyone trained in religion? Uh, nope. Yes, plus three. Uh, no, you're not trained in it, Order. Look, I'm not. No, if you if you have a dot <laughs> oh, next to it. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Boar's thinking. trained in religion. Uh, so Boar would have some understanding of lower planes. Would refer to creatures more like devils and demons. If ninjas still here. He said it. Yeah. I speak their language. Okay. <laughs> so how do we You're use it? You're related to someone. Throw it at them and hope you hit. Oh. Okay. Count to three. So I'm just going to try something. Five. He's going to try and use shape water. Not move it out of the cup or anything, but just see if he can control it. Uh, make an arc, uh, make a spell casting check. So, essentially, uh, my spell casting. I so play. Hang on. So essentially, what you would add if you were trying to hit was say, uh, produce flame. Um, yeah. All right. So, slash R one twenty plus five. But twenty. Uh, the water seems to be quite resistant, but you're able to sort of make it around a bit. It takes significant. Can I put all three of the bottles together and then do it? Like, how much water do I have? Mm, uh, the vial is... Uh, I, it's... Well, you took... Uh, oh, shit, no. God damn it, Comet. I was going <laughs> to use, like, chemistry, uh, <laughs> but that doesn't doesn't help. Uh, it's, think of sort of like... Uh, I don't know, you're talking probably about the same liquid as what maybe in, like, a can of fizzy drink or something, and some glass... It's it's more it's a sort of rounded bottom sort of tubed neck sort of uh, flask beaker. Okay. He's gonna got a little bit of so it's got a bit of weight when you sort of chuck it it would spin and then shatter against. Uh, you're like talking... that. Yeah, like that. Thank you. Hmm. My smartness probably isn't gonna work. Never mind. <laughs> I don't have enough for what I was being smart of. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, alright, he's gonna really shape water and push them all sort of back. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, very much odd. Just made me think of it. I say we leave in the morning. Get some potions. Would be wise. Uh, you may encounter some creatures wandering around as well. You get that anywhere. Ain't that the truth? Thanks for the warning. Chester General, they have tend to, they have avoided the cities thus far. However, uh, venturing about a half a day's travel away from them, you'll start to encounter them. They all originate from this cave? The ones currently around here, I believe so. I hope they don't start attacking the cities. That would be bad. Well... This is our chance to do something about it. To prevent that from happening. True. Certainly. I am... Um... Hmm. What? If you... If you find yourself slightly too in over... I am sure my sister here can get in touch. But I do not expect to be coming and bailing you out. <laughs> but I don't want you all to die... Understand. Be a horrible waste of life, and a great misfortune for you to join whose ever army this is. 
Plus, I try to keep my siblings alive. Of course. Speaking of which, have you have you heard from brother recently? Which one? Um, the one that tends to sneak around and not the one that sleeps around. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say the sleeping oh one is God. quite comf- is quite happily sleeping way back in the desert. Uh, sneaky brother. Hmm. Heard from him? I. Ooh, uh... I don't. By the way, that's the greatest thing to come back to. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, Sneaky brother, uh, you don't entirely. Well, I think the last I I heard of him, he was uh, poking around some uh, poking around somewhere down the sort of middle part of the Lord Coast, Vosgrad, I think. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. Never mind. Talking about some great treasure he was going to find. You know what he's like. Yeah, we know too well. <laughs> Don't we? Uh, how many are in your... I don't know if there's a list or if, you, if you're the same age, even. How many siblings do you have? We have... Well, there are four of us, so we both have three siblings. I you have see. met me, and you have clearly met my young, uh, my youngest sisters. And the two then, brothers. Yes, the one who sleeps around and the one who's. Ah, <laughs> hmm. uh, I love this. And by sleep around, we literally just mean lying on a cushion. The day. Ah, oh, that's, that's, life, that's not what. Okay. Uh-huh. What yep. else were you gonna think? <laughs> so no pipes. Up. <laughs> I would he say he literally sleeps mother, around. That's can. that's. Actually asked. Lucian returns to his drink. He, he literally oh just God. sleeps around the shop the vast majority of the time, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I know. That's why we call him that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brothers should really start charging people just to take naps on his cushions. Mm, he would have to charge himself, though. He'd go bankrupt. <laughs> I have Alrighty. no clue what well. I've missed. Shall I leave you to prepare? Um, yep. Yeah. Sure. And then she plays his, um, g- attempts to play guitar riffs on the wrong instrument. Oh, God. On <laughs> the bagpipes? No, not the <laughs> bagpipes. That needed... How do you do that? I don't know. That's why I was surprised. <laughs> honest, I feel like with Seven Girl, anything's possible. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Right? <laughs> if you're all high enough performance check, anything is possible. Well, she's not going to destroy her instruments. Those cost money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Uh, so you can get in touch with me without having to expend any of your spells. I recently came across these. So that she pulls out two stones and offers one to Savin. Savin will take stone. It appears to be a sort of small, a small pebble with. Appears to be the inscription, uh, not really inscription, but uh, appears to be on one side sort of an engraving of half a face, whilst uh, on the other side in- it's described as sending. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Ah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Uh, is there anything you want to do with hair before you leave? Uh, go for an extra long run. <laughs> okay. Well, you I go for an extra long run, run before you take this. Before you go for a nap. Uh, you meant, so you mentioned as we're walking past, there was an herbalist. Uh, yes, Sano. there was. So I would like to Wait, go there. Question: Is there a way I can get to a fight? Oh God. <laughs> <sighs> Roll investigation check. Uh, so no. Uh, there is a herbalist. What are you looking for in the herbalist? Um, uh, herbs and things for some uh, health potions. Maybe something to do with some uh, poisons. Uh, to uh, heal poisons, not make poisons. I will add. Yes, the... <laughs> uh, this herbalist does stock antitoxins, does stock healing potions, and some herbs to make them as well. That's what you. Um. How many? How many do they have of each of those things? 
two greater, three regular. Uh, and the herbs to make them? Uh, so they have enough. Uh, they would probably have enough to make uh, one greater or four regular. How much are the regular? Uh, regular healing potions, you're looking at 80 per piece. 80 what? 80 gold. How much for the herbs? Ooh. Herbs? Uh, the herbs are at 40 gold per for one regular. Um, how much for all of the herbs that I can buy? All of the herbs? Well, you can buy four of them, so four times 40. Four times 40, that's... That's 16, so 160. 116, yes. Math! 160. 160. Zero. Got, got, got it! <laughs> um, I can get two regular potions with the party's funds. <laughs> uh, so, that's... 16 platinum, yeah. Wait, did you get the two? He's getting the herbs. Oh, okay. And then you're buying the potions, healing potions, yeah? I'll buy two healing potions for with the party funds. Two regular? Yes, yeah, so that's 18, no, 16 platinum, right? Yeah, 16 platinum as well. Um, What about antitoxin herbs? Uh, They do have enough to make three batches. How much? Uh, uh, you're looking at uh, uh, antitoxin, meaning it 20, gives you advantage 20... against getting poison, right? Yeah, it's the, it's the stuff you made before you fought the basilisks. All right. Okay. Do we have stuff that helps heal poisons? Uh, no. Uh, there isn't anything which helps. Uh, there isn't anything which helps heal poison. Okay. Uh, antitoxin help. Antitoxin helps you fight against it. So, um. So different poisons will cause, uh, can cause different things, uh, but most of them you can, you know, try and save against. And if you have antitoxin, it will help you save against it. Uh, some of them you are just sort of flat poisoned for a while. I would probably say that the antitoxin helps reduce the time which it takes for your body to naturally fight it off. Okay. Um, what about water breathing? Uh, those would be more potions, and that'd be more on the arcanes. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity. Do. You could, uh, you could go and see if uh, Forgotten Problems stocks water breathing potions. Uh, no, thank you. It, it's right. not a too difficult of a thing. Uh, there's also something uh, called Alchemist's Fire, which is hanging around. Um, in the potion shop or the... In the herbalist. In the potion shop. <laughs> Alchemist's Fire. All right. Uh, how much for the antitoxin herbs? Uh, it's 25 per set, so essentially. It was, so it was uh, 3 by 25, Seven, 70. So 75, 75 gold pieces. How much for the alchemist fire? <laughs> 50 gold pieces. I will buy one. Buy one alchemist's fire. That's yes. It's 7 right, so. flat, gold. One pl you say how much? Mm hmm How much? Uh, that is 50 gold pieces, so that's 5 platinum. Alright, I will take 5 platinum. So it was 4 herbs, for healing potions... 4 healing, uh, four, 4 healing potion herb sets. It takes 4 of those to make one greater, uh, 4 days to do so. Alright. Um, and then and three. Or one set make, obviously makes one regular healing potion in one day. Like that. Okay. Uh, what was the alchemist's fire? What does that mm -hmm. do? Well, uh, as explained to you, essentially you throw it and the reaches the air, it kind of sets itself on sticky, relatively not the easiest thing to get off. Essentially, you throw this bottle at someone, it hits them, sets them on fire. They have to make, they have to spend their action trying to put the fire. Okay. Uh, if they don't, they just take a small amount of recurring damage at the beginning of each of its turns. So dumb creatures might not bother, and it might burn them all the way down. Smart creatures might hide out of sight, pat it out, and then return to combat. Uh, or you could obviously use it. Really awesome. Cough. 
<laughs> or you could sort of use it, I don't know, to like start fires. This is since essentially like insta fire. I'll leave it. Think <laughs> of um think of sort of stuff like uh oh I'm trying oh uh not quite burning oil but sort of like you throw it and you know, it smashes and sets the lights and yeah. sort of it's it's not yeah. quite magical but it's you know sort of fantasy stuff. Uh, think cool. think think napalm sort of it's essentially bottled napalm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Um have we slept? This is the next day, right? Uh, I was gonna say this is probably the sort of uh, the getting the ready. Then you'd probably sleep and then you'd set out. And since it is almost midnight, I would say we should probably call the session here. All right. Yeah. I'll just say that overnight I'll attune to the marksman shop. Certainly. Uh, well, you probably could have done that whilst you're on the boat as well. So, yeah. Any items which you want to attune? To? I'm just attuned, attuned to. to it now. Okay. So. And I'm going to add in the notes section, finally actually use this, um, adding what I purchased. And to make sure I got this right, 10 paper and... Uh, yes, t t 10 parchment and a uh, and some ink and an ink pen. Well, a quill. Yeah. yeah. 20 arrows and one alchemist Jesus. fire. Certainly. Oh, it's almost uh, the Alchemist right. Fire is actually something uh, is an actual item on. Yeah. Just for reference, if anything. Yeah. I wanted to Just... punch some stuff. <laughs> of course what did you end did. up wrong? Uh, right. Okay, so uh, I think we should probably call the session here. Yep. Hopefully, yeah. you don't hear any background noise from me. Um, so, I'm sure people are wondering what the mystery is with the B-team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, uh, since, uh, Purple will be traveling, uh, on the 15th, uh, when I'm still not entirely sure of how much it will conflict with us, or, um, we might be able to get her, actually, if it's about, if it's about three which you're traveling, how long does it take to get to hour and a bit? Purple. Audio cut out. Oh. Uh, well, essentially, you you may be here for the beginning of the session. Here for the end of it, at the very least. Mm hmm. Uh, so, because of this, uh, first of all, we were thinking she was going to be tall. Either way, because of this, uh, since she's going to be traveling, uh, still wanted to do a session. Um... So, and uh, due to some idea I, well, more I found and uh, am appropriating rather than had, I won't take credit for it, um, essentially, uh, next session, so to avoid sort of trying to do some of the stuff, especially since uh, it's somewhat Savangal storyline, feels somewhat, I mean, it's sort of Savangal bore, it feels somewhat cheap to sort of, you know, mm -hmm. just go continue on without Purple actually being here, even if she is happy for us to do so. Uh, so instead, we're going to have a different session with a completely different group of uh, adventurers. Uh, with possibly Purple being here for a part of it before disappearing, or not. She may be being repeatedly asked if she's remembered to pack certain things. Um, but it will be uh, it will be a canon session within this one, happening around the same uh, around uh, around the time which these guys were in the ruins about half a week, week ago, in world time, uh, and it'll be essentially the B team. And then for the week after that, we have uh, Comet is going to DM since uh, neither me or Purple will be here. Yes. So I need to get off my butt. <laughs> <laughs> you say that and you've been doing more stuff. Uh... Mm. Yeah. I want, I want it to be fun, and I want it to be good. Um, it will be fun. It will be. Do you want yeah. to know? I did not have more than a page of stuff for this session. Yeah. And I, half of that... Wow. And half of that was the intro. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, 
<laughs> so you'll, I'm sure you will do fine. Yeah, I think so too. So, so some some of us won't be here for the twenty second, I believe. Yeah, the twenty second yeah. or the twenty third because uh, Australia is annoying. <laughs> all right. So basically, yeah. next week we'll be doing a B team stream. It's going to be fun, <laughs> interesting, new characters, same world, same canon. They're just the B plot, effectively. Part of why they're called the B team, and then the week after, <laughs> same DM. Yeah. Slightly wacky characters. I've allowed them. slightly. Slightly. I'm a wizard who with a sword, man. <laughs> I've allowed. I'm not going to spoil what the hell I am. You guys are going to wait till next week. I, I have allowed them to be somewhat adventurous. Uh, don't mind wacky, interesting. Um, they'll have. They'll have. I'm a... trying to see if I can make mine as upbeat as possible. Uh, they'll, they'll, they will have. Uh, they're interesting characters. Um, using some homebrew stuff as well. Comet is using my homebrew races, which I want to, well, which I want to get tried out, and so happily decided to choose one. Uh, so I've sort of, I, I've allowed them to experiment and such, but it is uh, level five, the same as these guys for now. Yes, and then They'll, the week uh, probably level up after this quest, and then the week after next week will be the one shot run by me. Um, still working out a name. For it. I have a general idea of what they're doing, working on everything, should be fun, I hope. Hopefully everything's not going to die. Um, it's very well possible that they may. Um, and on that bombshell, I'm gonna end the stream here. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye bye! See you dude! Bye! No. Go eat cheese! No! no. Wait, wait. For every-